let's do a recap. Where did we leave off uh, in the last session? So, Not in a good place. Right. <laughs> in the best place. In possibly the worst place. Uh, where we left off was uh, there was something shady afoot going on Deep Space Nine. Uh, the um, for Bajoran First Minister has been acting strangely, so the commander has arranged a state dinner uh, where he intends to investigate the matter further. Uh, meanwhile, a uh, Starfleet has discovered that a uh, that a, a group of uh, dissidents has taken kidnapped uh, the um, the former wife of uh, Benjamin Sisko. Uh, as well as the mother of his uh, child. Uh, and uh, uh, we arranged an away team, uh, the Euro Europa arranged an away team mm -hmm. to go rescue her. Uh, we uh, had just managed to sneak into an abandoned temple uh, and um, we had just managed to sneak into a ben abandoned temple, temple and we're about to, and we managed to take down the transport inhibitor uh, it, Going against orders, uh, the uh, uh, one of the young lieutenants, uh, Jisha Sojin, had uh, transported instead of the um, the assailants, transported the uh, hostage instead. Uh, and because of transporters, uh, th that risks complication due for her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So we have yet to see the outcome of that. Right. And we left off. We were uh, we had just uh, we had just finished the transport. We just begun the transport, and we cut away. Right. And uh, we were going to resume play today with uh, one of the characters. I believe it was Elizabeth was going to break into Shikar's room while mm -hmm. the meeting was ongoing. Correct. Uh, yeah. Although not break into the room. Well, you know, sneak in. Just a, a little <laughs> illegal entry. I'm going to deceive my way into the room. All right. Are you going to try to just head up to the guards and go in, or did you want to? Yeah, uh, I'm going to go up to. I'm going to go up to them, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm I'm with uh, Deep Space Nine uh, security. Uh, there seems to be some kind of Tetrion leak somewhere in this part of the sector, in the station. If you don't mind, I'm just going to go in and do a scan, look around. <laughs> They, they look at each other quite skeptically, um, but you are wearing a Starfleet uniform, so give me. A um, a good role for that. What is the role? Let's do. Uh, what do you think? Daring or presence and uh, command? Uh, yeah. Well, espionage is uh, usually security. Um, I'll, I'll take it. That's fine. Okay. Um, so you know they're both equally terrible for you, Beth. Uh, yes. My thought with command was because you're trying to talk your way in. So sure, that's fair. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm going to roll daring plus command. Uh, an eight and a four. That's two successes. Yeah, that is two successes. Okay. Uh, they look at each other, and uh, I should have said the difficulty was going to be one. Um, they look at each other, and they kind of just, okay, and uh, the door, they, they let you go past the door, um, and you gain more momentum, which I assume you want to you want to yeah, save I'll, I'll up there. That. So uh, you head into his room, and uh, you know lights are turned off and everything else. It's pretty typical. It's a pretty typical room. For DS9. All right. Well, uh, I will let out a, a small sigh of relief that uh, my plot worked. Uh, and then I will break out my tricorder, begin uh, scanning. I'm specifically looking for uh, anything uh, resembling uh, the radiation that comes from uh, orbs and orb influence. Okay. Um, the difficulty is going to be four. Uh, and you can roll... Uh, I would say reason or control and science. Um, I would like to use three momentum if people are cool with that. And by me. Okay. No, no objections. All right. There you go. Nice. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so that's four successes. Uh, yep. Mm hmm. Uh, oh wait, do you have a? Fo well, it doesn't matter if you have a focus or not because the ones that one counts as two. I mean, I do have a, a focus in sensors. So. Yeah, um, doesn't matter because none of those are under other than the one, anyways. So, um, yes, um, you scan around for a little while and you find uh, faint traces of the energy that is associated with the orbs or the 
um, wormhole aliens, as Starfleet calls them, um, the prophets. Um, you find a little bit, just trace amounts uh, in and around uh, Shakar's bedroom, mostly his bed. Okay. Well, that uh, that uh, verifies my theory that some, some kind of influence, uh, or that that is further evidence of my theory. Uh, Shikar and company were just arriving where well, Shikar and Ambrose were just arriving. Um, I believe when we last left them, mm-hmm. um, Shikar had put his hand on Ambrose's shoulder and just smiled after they had had a long heartfelt discussion about um, being their father's sons. Um, as you enter into the room, there is uh, some cheering. Uh, someone stops and, and uh, three cheers to the first minister and everyone does the three cheers thing. Um, the retention, the, the feeling in the room gets noticeably more tense, though, as you enter. Uh, in the room is the second minister, um, uh, Mr. Ambrose. We'll throw up that picture there. Um, the first minister and the second minister, as well as the station's first officer uh, and uh, Commander Edwards, or Edwin, sorry, the Commander Edwin, the the chief. Starfleet security officer aboard station as the chief security officer is not aboard station currently. Um, there are also a number of other Starfleet delegation members, um, members of the, the crew, um, the leading, there's a, a trail who is the leading, um, medical personnel aboard station right now, uh, since Dr. Bashir is not aboard station. Uh, there are also uh, a couple of Bolians and a number of humans. Um, there are no, high-ranking delegates here. There's no, um, none of the ambassadors are here uh, at the moment anyways. Um, I do, I assume they were invited, but they have not yet come. Um, there are also a number of of the Bajoran delegation here as well as some Bajoran security. Uh, in the room as a whole, though, you only see about six total security officers. That's uh, four that are Bajoran and two that are Federation. Um, could, could I do my own uh, chief of security thing and just give a quick scan of the room and make sure everything looks good? Sure. Uh, give me an insight and security role. All right. Uh, difficulty complication? Uh, I'm going to say the difficulty at the moment is... Uh, I'm going to give you two difficulties. Uh, to get a basic understanding of the room, I'm going to give you a difficulty of one, but for a very in-depth perception uh, of the room, like a, a true understanding of the room, I'm going to say it's three. Okay. D- does my uh, my canar telepathy aid in that in any way? Uh, I will lower... Uh, yeah, I will say that uh, uh, it only works on people in fairly short range, but I will give you mm-hmm. a, a, a minus... Uh, a difficulty of... Uh, an advantage, so it's minus one difficulty, so... Okay. So one and two, or zero and two, I mean. Okay. Uh, sure. I don't think I have any. Th- uh, this might be a stretch, but would team dynamics work looking around the room and just nodding to the security officers, doing that sort of silent, uh, how's everything looking? I would say that if it had been your team, yes, but so this is, then so you don't really have the experience with know. this group. Yeah. yeah, I'd say gotcha. no. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Uh, so he should at least have Mills there. I don't know if that would sway sure. that at all. I did say Mills was there. Yeah, right. she was invited. Are you acting as security, Mills? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
I'm still going to go ahead and say no because it's too. It's an advantage that covers a, a farther amount than that. So I'm going to sure. go ahead and yeah. say no. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. Inside security. Let's see what happens. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, well the difficulty no. was zero, <laughs> so um, no complications are ensued because I didn't raise the complication range, um, which I probably should have actually done. Uh, you get a basic sense that, like I said, there's a, a lot of tension in the room, um, but you don't catch anything out of the ordinary beyond that. Um, just an unusual amount of tension for what you would expect to be in the room at the moment. Cool. Uh, the first, uh, the second minister comes up uh, to to you and Shakar and says, ah, first minister, welcome and thank you for coming. And she offers the Bajoran greeting. Um, uh, the delegates, uh, the Federation delegates have been most generous and kind. Uh, how are you feeling, First Minister? And he kind of looks back at you for a second and smiles and looks back to the Second Minister. He's like, I've never felt more alive, Second Minister. Thank you for asking. Um, there's someone over here that I feel like I should talk to and uh, turns to the two of you. And if you'll excuse me, I would like to talk to the First Officer. And uh, unless anyone has objection, he, he will walk away. Um, the second minister, uh, on the other hand, uh, look, turns to you, Ambrose, and um, I'm surprised to see him coming in with you, um, but I'm pleased that you were able to bring him. I figured it would set a good precedence. Yes. Well... Thank you for setting, setting all of this up. Uh, it is uh, something that I think we will all benefit from. And she she's kind of looking around like she needs to find someone she needs to talk to sort of sort of issue. As soon as it's reasonably politically appropriate, Mar would like to cut in and talk to the first minister. Okay. Um, I will get to that one moment. Um, the second minister looks at, yeah, you know, as, as she's looking around, she says, if you'll excuse me, I'm... Uh, I should mingle. Certainly. Um, and then she uh, she meanders off to mingle with other Starfleet and Bajoran officials. Um, Shakar is kind of just idly chatting with people. It's you know it's before the main event begins, so uh, he's just kind of mingling with the first officer, and then he meanders off to someone else. And and uh, it wouldn't be in a, it would not be an inappropriate time for Mar to sneak in and have a have a word. Okay. Uh, he'll approach him and, and first ask how he's feeling. I feel fine, thank you. I had a I had an excellent rest. Your advice was comforting. It's gratifying to hear, First Minister. I, if you have a moment, I was I was curious about it, about something. Um, I understand you recently returned from your tour of the Federation and have. If I may be so bold, found matters of which you are skeptical. I was curious if you spent any time at all or spent much time on Vulcan and what you were able to see there. I I believe there are some interesting and, if not obvious, similarities between our peoples. He uh, he nods his head a little bit and, and kind of puts his hand on your shoulder and, and lowers his head as he turns to kind of bring you into his confidence, a uh, sort of a gesture of, of let's talk over here kind of thing. Um, I did spend a little time on Vulcan. I found it, uh, your people are quite brisk, but the religious, uh, overtones that your people have is quite similar to ours. I profess great ignorance of, of yours, though I'm, I'm deeply curious, especially being here on the station and having the chance to meet practitioners. One thing I believe we share in common is a reticence about discussing such matters with strangers. I was wondering if perhaps you and I might take a step towards overcoming some of that and compare notes, as it were. I don't see any reason i'm no vedic or prylar or heaven forbid the kai but i uh i have found my faith so perhaps we can set aside some time after this meeting to discuss it further 
I'd be interested in hearing a Vulcan's insights on all of the issues that Starfleet has dealt with, with our little uh, backwater world. I would hesitate to call it that, sir. But And my concerns, are, my interests are at the more personal and less strategic level. Perhaps a conversation about our mutual spiritual interests might might be a diversion. And if you have time, I would be amenable. I look forward to it. Um, I'm sorry I didn't catch your rank or name, uh, really. <laughs> Dr. Marr. Doctor will do it. Oh, yes. Marr. That's right. <sighs> Well, Marvel bow and okay. Uh, he kind of nods and and turns back to the uh, the room as a whole. Um, back on the planet as uh, um, we are waiting for Elizabeth to make it to the room. Um, we uh, the transport has happened. You, you, the, those of you inside of the room have noticed that the transporter has uh, taken your hostage that you were trying to rescue. Um, and there are four um, Bajorans who are armed heavily, hiding behind crates and whatnot, looking at all of you. Uh, I will uh, we'll, we'll step back into combat rounds really quick and let you guys go first. Okay, so we can see four Bajorans. Correct. The mother and and unborn. unborn child have been have have disappeared. Correct. The, and we still have two some things that I've sensed we cannot see yet. Correct. Right? Okay. So as last we left it when when that happened, you guys had had broken in. Yeah, it stormed in. Uh, some covering fire had happened. Uh, the bullion uh, had knocked over the. Uh, was the bullion? No, Kaz knocked over the. Yep. Uh, um. Transport the, the transport inhibitor, uh, whilst the bullion was giving cover fire. Cover fire, yeah. Uh, at which point, the the Bajorans had ducked behind some things, started returning fire, um, sort of returned fire, anyways. And then the trans, as soon as the transporter uh, module had uh, had fallen, um, a few seconds later, the transport initiated. You could hear it, see whatever. Um, so that is where we left off. Okay. Cass if, would if like could, to. Oh, go ahead. If, go. if I could just add. Uh, it, it was it was my understanding as a player that I was actually following the orders. It was my understanding that was our contingency plan. If that yeah. wasn't, that's a player disconnect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought it was too. I, mean, okay. I thought that was our okay. plan. Yeah. No, um, Deshavi had specifically said she did not want Yates transported until she she could ensure that it was safe. Right. Um, yeah, I, I thought that was sort of countermanded by Cass, who is actually yeah. in charge. Right. Um, it is a conversation yeah. that can be certainly yeah. had once you're sure. back yeah, aboard right. ship. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I was just. Okay. Yep. Um, no, I get where you're coming from, though. Like, just to add an asterisk after mm. that that uh, <laughs> recap. Go uh, easy I, on yeah. me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. I just remember the snafu mainly. Yeah. So that's all right. Um, I thought it worked out really well. So. Yeah. Uh, no, I I I am pleased evelyn is pleased with how the story is playing yeah so that is where we left off who wants to go first the players do have the initiative kaz would like to try to diffuse the tension and get the bajorans to stand down okay what are you going to do uh she is going to say hey the hostage is gone we can keep shooting each other or we can just stand down and call this a day we're not going to fire if you don't let's let's get Let's get together. Let's talk this out, and everybody can walk away from this. Um, you hear some hushed whispering from behind the boxes for like, for, for a few seconds. How do we know you're not just going to shoot us when we step out? Kaz will step out of cover and drop her phaser. Just silence for a few seconds as I contemplate whether or not I want to shoot you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, they have another hostage. <laughs> right. Uh, one of the Majorans steps out and uh, raises his face up above his head um, with his hands, both of his hands, uh, and then um, kind of gestures for the other ones and as he throws his face to the ground. Uh, and the other three, um, two of the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, one of the other ones steps out and does the same. The other two do not, um, but they are not firing. 
They're just not coming out. Uh, can she roll to persuade? Yes. Um, okay. Presence in command, or I would maybe accept daring in command. Uh, presence works for me. She has diffused the tension, so she's going to roll three. Uh, I'm going to assume, uh, I'm going to say that the difficulty on this task is actually going to be fairly high um, for uh, uh, yet to be discovered reasons. Uh, the difficulty is going to be three. Okay. Um, that is assuming that you have already diffused the tensions for everyone else. So, okay. Uh, focus and negotiation? Yes. All righty. Uh, uh, team, can I spend a momentum? Yeah. Cool. Go for it. Let's see what happens. Wow. Nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so five <laughs> successes. Um, Was that one momentum spend or two? One, and I got an extra die for diffuse the tension. Gotcha. Yep. And I think that second die costs two still. Uh, I've never seen it played that way. I've never, I've never, I don't read it as being played that way, but, um, cause I think the, the way I've always done it is the first momentum you buy, the first momentum you spend to buy a die counts one, right. then two. Um, I could be mistaken. I'm not sure how the rule actually plays, but that's how I, I've always done yeah, it. Yeah, I've so. always run it that way. Um, so that is five. Do you want to do any kind of flashiness with those extra two momentum or do you want to just save them? Save them. We'll bank those two. The two Bajorans re reluctantly step out from behind their uh, fortifications uh, and lay down their phasers. Um, there's definitely some physical tension in them uh, that is not... The, they do not have a sense of defeat as the other two necessarily do. Um, okay. But they're not armed anymore, so... What do you do? Anybody. Um, I would like to try and get a bead on, um, Yates, if I can location and, um, intention of the two missing. Okay. People. Um, give me a, uh, what did we decide that was last time? It was, uh, presence and okay. science, I think. Presence and science. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't remember how we decided to use the Bajoran power, and I forgot to look it up. So, not the Bajoran. I think we the, did presence. Um, maybe insight. Sure, insight and science works for me. Because okay. as Brian said yesterday in a game, science is the oh, it's, it's medicine. Medicine. Um, but that science is the one that does catches all the weird stuff. So right. Yeah. But yeah, it is actually medicine, I believe. One success. Okay. One success. Um. The other, the other presences, the two other presences that you sensed are actually cohabitating in the same space as two of the as the two tense Bajorans. Oh. On that note, um, who was in the shuttlecraft? I forgot. Uh, Jisa. Jisa, mm -hmm. right. So uh, I, I've actually been thinking about this. Uh, we do have the Europa in orbit because they were the ones who snagged the four outside. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, she she should know that something's going wonky with this transport. Can I uh, can I call up to Tong and see if we could actually use the 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 shuttlecraft sort of like a relay and have Tong use you know the ship's better transporter to fix whatever the situation is. Obviously, um, with a higher higher difficulty because of that complication. Right. Yes, I think I'll allow that because um, the because the Europa is in orbit. Um, however, the difficulty before was four. Correct. Uh, no, the the difficulty for the for the transport itself was one, but it had a complication range of five. Oh, correct. Yeah. You're right. Um, so, so I did succeed with a single complication, but the right. complication is generally would be to increase the difficulty of a further right. task. Um, I'm going to say that in that case, uh, in order for Tong to be able to do it, so you're holding her essentially in stasis in the mm -hmm. transporter pattern buffer. 
Um, I will say that yes, Tong can make the roll. The difficulty is going to be uh, for the relay. You're going to be doing it at a difficulty of three, uh, and the complication range will stay the same. Okay. Uh, would Jisa get an assist on this, or sure? It's weird that you're wrong for both characters, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I figured this would happen at some point. Uh, okay. How how do we do? How do we do this, like, actually in software? <laughs> um, all right. So the way, because we don't have Jisa basically in the system yet, you can open up Tong, because Tong is the only one I currently have in the system. Right, right. Um, and you can roll for Tong normal, and then you just roll the, a single die for Jisa, the way that we have been rolling for secondary characters. Uh, okay. So I, it's not action actually letting me change how many dice or complication range I have when I open up Tong. I got to that. I, I think I can change that. I was hoping it would do that for you guys. Um, the complication range was five. Five, yeah. Yeah. And you're rolling two dice. And then I don't know if you had a focus for this one or not. Uh, uh oh yeah, transporters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what is this? Uh, control engineering. Yes, control engineering for probably both of them. Okay. Control uh, although I would also accept daring engineering for either of them because this is pretty daring. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Tong's definitely going to go control engineering so that that all looks right i really should have bought a uh, bought more Ooh. dice but that's a crit uh yeah. let's uh nice. so that that's the three i needed sure <laughs> right it was difficulty three let me yep. let me uh bring up uh jisa real quick for that assist and uh does the europa uh get to roll yes uh, so so somebody else can roll for the europa so i'm not rolling for three different things um <laughs> Okay, I said I was going to do it, but it doesn't matter. If you can't change the, the stuff on it, let me know. Europa's complication doesn't change, so. 12. And yeah, that is... And Jisa is rolling with a 15, no real focuses. Uh, she only gets one die, right? Correct. For, for the assist. Yeah. The ship does know. succeed, by the way. Where even is the ship character sheet? Under ships. That's another. That's another success. I don't have a ships. Nope. You know, we've been, we've uh, it's when you. Uh, I'll show you how to get to it in a minute. Um, so that is five successes, correct? Yes. All right. Um, with five successes, um, you manage to snag the energy beam, uh, the the transporter pattern, I should say, and uh, Cassidy Yates appears on the Europa. Um, without any well she still has a little bit of a little bit of, of complication because of the the, mm -hmm. the well, she I, appears I to be she looks up at, at Tong and uh, um, looks him square in the eyes as she as she's holding her her her, uh, her stomach um, and she's just like it's time <laughs> Time? Uh, yeah, I, I, I believe it's uh, four, four hundred hours. Not oh, that time, time! Not time, that time! 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 time. <laughs> doctor! Do doctor is on the planets. Uh, nurse! Nurse! We need! We need nurse! All of the nurses to transport a room three, please. All of the nurses. All of the nurses. <laughs> all of them. Yeah. I love it. That uh, uh, that sound. Uh, the the bridge is aware of this as well, uh, obviously. Um, so the captain can do as he pleases with that, but. Before we get back to the captain, we'll jump back down to the planet. And uh, actually, we're going to jump back to the station real quick. Um, on DS9, about that moment is when Isabeth is reaching the um, the conference. Uh, yeah. Um, so she'll look for an opportunity to speak with uh, the commander when he's away from uh, the Bajorans. Are you, uh, did you run to the, to, uh, the meeting or did you walk casually? Oh no, definitely ran. Definitely okay. ran. So the door slides open and, and there's a slightly out of breath trill woman ensign standing in the doorway. Commander, uh, mm, 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 mm. She gestures her head to the side. I will excuse myself from talking with who, whoever random NPC I've been talking with. Okay. Uh, Ensign? I, listen, I, uh, I got it. I, this 
proves I I was able to prove my theory. I snuck into his uh, bedroom. Don't ask how, uh, and got a scan. There's definitely uh, res. There's definitely radiation that originates from the orbs there. I think in or in orb experiences, what's influencing his current attitude. Mills, give me a security and insight roll. Difficulty is going to be two. Come back here. Um, that should be two successes. Okay. Um, you notice that uh, one of the other the tr the Federation Trill officer that is in the room that is not the huffing ensign um, is staring quite intently at Shakar. Uh, and there is uh, an unusual amount of tension in that uh, in that trill. Um, uh, Ambrose, you want to do anything first? Uh, respond to. Uh... Uh, sure. Uh, so I, I would say I would be having this conversation, leaning against the door frame, still looking into the room. I don't. Sure. I don't even really. I don't look towards Yesbeth. I am focused on the room. Okay. Um, right. Uh, yes, I will definitely be asking how and why at a later date but i suppose that's good information is this actionable information how can we use this uh well uh good point uh let me see what i can do maybe i can come up with a way to counter the whatever's influencing it. at which point you are interrupted um uh, go ahead and give me a, uh, an, uh, Ambrose, go ahead and give me an, an insight and, and security. Your difficulty is going to be one higher, so you'll be difficulty uh, three. Difficulty three. Do I have any time to act before between you will. noticing and... Okay. Yeah, you will. I just want to make sure that he gets his role, and then, then, we'll, then we'll go gotcha. into to, to the next set of rounds. Okay. <clears throat> insight, security, difficulty three. Uh, do any of my focuses fly? Uh, composure, escape, and avoidance? Probably not. I don't think so, no. No. Okay. Um, I'm going to say I'm, I am distracted by Yesbeth, so I, 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 won't, I won't take that. Uh, actually, actually mm, is there a way I can be bold with this? Because I, I am making a security role. Uh, yeah, you need some more threats. So I'm going to buy another D20 by giving you some threats because I am bold. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am very intently still looking about the room. Sure. So I get another dice here. Wow. Three successes. So you both will have a chance to, uh, to, 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 to basically act. Um, Mills will be able to act first as she was the first one to see the trill is uh carrying a type one phaser and is raising it towards shikar what do you do this is somebody in a yellow shirt he, uh no she's wearing a blue shirt she's okay. a she is a uh, she's one of the medical officers okay from ds9 okay. um i want to how Am I close enough that I can, um, like, tackle her or attack her in some way, uh, knock it out of her hand, something like that? Yeah, you can. You can make the effort. Sure. Okay. Can Mar assist? Um. Sure. Sure. As soon as you see her moving, you could see what's going on, uh, and then, or Ambrose could assist. You could both assist, really. Okay. Just to bring her to the ground. <laughs> uh, well, she she raises her phaser towards Shakar. Yes. Uh, so if I can see that uh, Mills is reacting first and heading in the direction of the phaser, I'm actually going to head in front of Shakar. And if it's fired, I'm putting my body between okay. you know the blast and Shakar. So yeah, Mar Mar and Mills can go ahead and and try to tackle. Uh, Mar has. Composure and small group tactics. Would any of those apply? Um, I'm going to say no, just because you didn't have time to actually coordinate. Fair enough. Uh, daring security? Yeah. 
Okay, that is a 12. I assume that's two successes, Evelyn. Yeah. Wow, okay. Okay. Uh, the trill... Ouch. Ouch. Sorry. <laughs> it okay. popped my ankle. Um, it was quite painful. Ow. Um, <laughs> what's that? Get that taken care of. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, the two of you managed to hit very hard the uh, the trill and take her down. Um, actually, roll... Before you get before taken down, go ahead and roll... Evelyn, uh, your hand-to-hand combat. Five. Uh, and you rolled a four, which is a zero. Six is one. Four is zero. One is one. So that's at two. And three is zero. So you have two damage and one effect. Um, so you guys can knock her down. You also have one momentum that you can use to do either additional damage or whatever else you can do with momentum. Um, which normally I have my um, cheat sheet open, but I forgot to open it, so... Nope, and I don't have my cheat sheet open. I That's right. Either. I know you can do a resistance or you can do additional damage. We'll go with one of those two for now. Would Mar neck pinch her? I like um, that. My, I was thinking, I was going to ask if we could use that additional momentum to to incapacitate her in some fashion. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, you you managed to grapple her anyways and bring her to the ground. Um, uh, you use the extra momentum to uh, to go ahead and give her the nerve pinch. And uh, down she goes, dropping the phaser. Um, as Ambrose is moving towards Shikar, um, you'll see that uh, um, sh- that uh, the the Bajoran. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, the trill was not alone. There was also a Bajoran. There is also a Bajoran who is moving quickly towards Shikar, but this time with a knife. Um, uh, I am going to get a quick attack. Uh, uh, hold, hold, hold up, hold up, hold go up. Ahead. I have quick to action. I am okay. retaining the uh, the initiative here. All right, so you can spend the two momentum to do that? Or no, it's uh, it's free because you have quick to action. Yep, it's free. Yep, okay. So yes, there is a there is an encroaching Bajoran with a knife. Were, were the first and second minister lucky enough to be in the same general area? <laughs> they are not. Okay, great. Uh, well, first minister is first. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm definitely going to impose myself between the minister and this uh, this Bajoran, okay. uh, and actually sort of give him just a real gentle push backwards. Uh, Shikar and uh, Shakar, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I'd I'd like to I'd I'd like to try to take this guy down. Okay. Um, this one actually knows you're coming because you're standing between them. So this is a, a uh, fitness security um, for grappling, fitness security opposed. So. Okay. Fitness security. I'm going to buy another dice with bold. Uh, right, opposed. Uh, yep. Okay. Your difficulty is presently two. Two. I get three dice. I have a focus in hand-to-hand combat. I really don't want Shakar being stabbed on my watch, so can I buy another dice? <laughs> sure. How's everyone feel about that? Go for it. All right, I'm going to buy another dice. So I'm rolling four dice. I want to make sure this guy is not getting anywhere near the first minister. Uh, how do I? How do I denote? How do I take a? We'll worry about that after the roll. Four successes. Four successes is succeeding by two. Um, so you manage to grapple, and you can use those two momentum to do whatever you'd like. Um, uh, you can choose when you grapple to either um, do damage as per normal attack, hold them in place, or uh, that's really it, because if, uh, if the grappled opponent wins, they can choose to escape. But So you can either do damage or hold them in place. What do you want to do? Or you could do uh, both, really. Or spend for disarm. Yeah, I'm yep. spending the two men- momentum on disarm. So okay. I, am, I am wrenching his arm to one side and just knocking the knife as far away as I can. Uh, sure. And what, what, is, what would be the damage for a... Uh, it's unarmed combat. Unarmed. Uh, so it's one plus your security rating. Okay. Uh, I'm 
Uh, no, I, I already have him in an arm lock. Having having rested that away, I'm just going to hold him there. I'm going to sure. Grapple. Um, okay. Uh, his return action is going to be to attempt to, because it's now his turn, mm-hmm. uh, he's going to attempt to get out of that and probably fail. Um, so it is security and fitness contested again. Okay. And difficulty is going to be two again. Uh, I do have my focus. I told you I was going to be a threat generator. Take another one. <laughs> Three successes. Okay. So you have one momentum you can spend on doing anything you want, or you can bank it. But uh, he stops struggling after a few seconds of trying to get free. He's just It's just too much tension on his arm. He's just now yeah. lying face down on the ground within an arm bar. Yeah, I'm going to bank that one. Okay. Um, Shakar uh, looks at you and and uh, looks at uh, Mar and Mills and the the now two uh, captured and and contained uh, would be assailants. Um, the second minister comes over to Shakar quickly and first minister, you all right? And the the first minister just looks at her and looks at them again, and leaves the room. The The first minister doesn't say anything and leaves the room. Correct. Uh, the the uh, one that, that Mills and Mars Mar went out, he, that one's knocked out. He is unconscious. He's dealt with. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yep. She. Mills, she. O- over here. Yes, sir. And as soon as you, as soon as you put your, your weight on this guy, I'm getting up and I'm going after Shakar. Okay. Okay. Um, as you follow out the door, Shikar has the two security pe- uh, officers from the outside of the room with him. Um, but you're going to catch up, I assume. First Minister, are you all right? <clears throat> he stops and looks back. I'm perfectly fine. Thank you for your quick intervention, Commander. I sort of look ar- Does he look like just completely unfazed? Uh, more or less, yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna look around. Uh, and and the the two security guards are they Bajoran security Bajoran. DS9 security? Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna look around and. I understand, given your past, that you're fairly used to these situations. It's hardly the first assassination attempt I've survived. Eh? I might be one of the closest ones, but. Well, I'm. Glad it was yet another unsuccessful one. May I ask where you plan on going? We don't know. We don't have the area secure. Back to my shuttle. I can say one thing, Commander. Yeah, the shuttle that brought us here, yes. Um, The one thing I can say for sure, Commander, is at least the Bajorans and Federation have come together on one thing they can agree on. He just kind of stares at you intently for a moment. I'll be heading back to Bajor. Right, I... Very good. If uh, if that's what you wish, I will admit to some disappointment that this altercation has ruined a perfectly good dinner. He, he gets a, a faint smile, kind of a... Well, uh, attempted murder does have a tendency to do that. At least, please, allow me to accompany to your, you to your shuttle. He looks at the two, the two guards and... Um, uh, give me an insight and... Uh, give me an insight and command roll real quick. Insight, command, difficulty? Uh, two. Difficulty two. Uh, I'm gonna spend one of those one of those momentum if that's okay. Go for it. I'm gonna get a read on this guy. Um, I'd like to intercede in this scene before it wraps up. <clears throat> As Elizabeth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I have any focuses that will that will work okay. for this. I don't it- know if this is necessarily inspirational. 
did you want to did you want to go out and intercede with with um ambrose and yeah. shikar did you want to be inside yes no i wanted to follow uh ambrose so, okay. uh, as he's leaving and uh while they're walking i'm going to try to configure that thing that we were talking about when we got it interrupted sure that disrupt the effects of a prophecy of sure. a uh, orb uh you have a, you have a tricorder with you i assume i'm sorry what yeah the tricorder yeah you have a tricorder with you i assume yeah oh yeah, yeah they do everything um all right so ambrose go ahead and give me that roll um and brian if you want to go ahead and give me a um reason or daring in science okay i would uh also like to use a momentum sure Uh, that's three successes. Okay. Uh, Ambrose, you got a single success. I only got one. Difficulty was two. Yep. Um, you do not, the, there's a little bit, a flash of something in his eyes, but you're not really sure that you're, you're not even a hundred percent sure you saw it, but some kind of maybe internal conflict there for a second. And then he, uh, as he, he says, of course, uh, um, I, I would appreciate the company commander. Thank you. Uh, as Elizabeth is coming up behind, um, you uh, you have something that you think would disrupt the um, the the influence uh, if you wanted to use button. it. I'm gonna press that button. Okay. Uh, a high pitched uh, as as uh, Shakar is beginning to turn to walk away, uh, and Ambrose is is walking, is standing there with him, um, and the two guards obviously. Uh, a high pitched uh, wailing noise comes from a trill that's coming up behind Ambrose uh, well the tricorder they're holding anyways um, Shakar uh, promptly grabs his head and uh, lets out a ah, ah, and falls to his knees um, and you see a um, a shimmering resonance with a kind of a, a reddish brown hue to it kind of um, wisps out of him uh, takes a couple of jaunts to side to side uh, do do either one either one you want to try to do anything before it uh moves before it acts um so so shikar is is on the ground correct on his knees this thing is over top of him yep it's kind of wafting out of him uh yeah i i know this is almost certainly going to be unsuccessful but i will be taking a shot at that <laughs> okay um, there's no need to roll because you're correct. Yeah, it's, it's, it's go right through. Yep, you phaser, you you, you fire a phaser through it, and the the two uh, the two security guards uh, also kind of like raise their phasers but don't fire. Um, the uh, the thing shimmers a little bit and then darts off through one of the bulkheads at the side of the the DS9 uh, hallway. Yes, Beth, can you track that? Uh, I can try. Station <laughs> security intruder. The, uh, and I, I give the, the corridor we are, we are on and where it was heading. Right. The lights, the klaxons go up uh, in, in throughout the station and you can hear the uh, energy fields and whatnot coming online. Um, the station's pretty well equipped for intruders. So, uh, Are you turning off the, the tricorder and switching it back over, Azabeth? Uh, yeah. To, uh, I could probably use the same program that I've had going before right. to detect... Uh, um, so, um, uh, I would like to use another momentum. Sure. Oh, uh, that one's much worse. <laughs> uh, Looks like one. Uh, it's, uh, oh, do, do, do. yeah, one success. Okay. Um, you get a sense of where it's going for a few moments. You can track it, but, uh, once it gets nearer to the energy system, the energy core of the, of the station, uh, the readings become too faint to track it beyond that. So it definitely headed somewhere towards the central core of the station, uh, and then you lost sight of it. So, on that note, uh, I will also be calling for medical. Sure. Um, back aboard the uh, planet, because a boarding planet is a aboard thing. The planet. Back aboard <laughs> the planet. You have four uh, captive Bajorans. Okay. Um, two of them are slightly less uh, willful than the other two, um, or willing, I should say, than the other two. Um, what do you guys want to do? I think Cass, you're in charge here. Cass would call for everybody to be beamed out. I think. All right. So the Lexington is con or the Lexington. The, the Europa is contacted by Cass for a beam out. I assume that there's no 
no captain's orders to deny that course kind of thing. No. Specifying the Bajorans are going straight to the brig. Yeah. No. Sure. Bajorans to the brig, the rest of us to transport around. Right. Yeah. Uh, you'll probably just all beam there and be security waiting for the, the Bajorans. That's no big deal. Um, uh, beaming them straight to security is one of those things that you can do it. Tong can do it. It is just more difficult if you, if you want to make them make the roll. And Tong's having a bad day, so yeah. We'll let that one go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tong's got amniotic fluid all over his tri- all over his, his uh <laughs> Yeah, there, there's a quick uh, quick like smash cut over to the transporter room and he's just you see Yates on the floor and he's like between the legs, just like ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, we... all of the nurses. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Uh you guys being back aboard, uh, it's your choice if you want to be back in a Tong's room or if you want to go to a, a more <laughs> clean transporter room. I don't think the transporter room would want them. I don't think they'd want you to be back up, up in the same transporter room, though. So um, You do beam up, uh, and security is waiting for your four Bajorans, um, taking them into custody and moving them on. So we have, we have resolved the bulk of the combats now, so we get a chance to, to dive into some other stuff. What do you guys want to do? Um, Kaz is going to ask the doctor about those two remaining presence, presences. They're inside the two Bajorans that were reluctant to come out. Oh, um, okay, before so there like... weren't camouflaged shooters there. That's, that's a relief. Um, it's a relief and disconcerting at the same time. Um, I want to... Uh, assess them and figure out what exactly is happening here. Yeah, that sounds like a medical thing, but if you need science to assist, just let me know and, and you know, we'll, we'll get the scanners going. I think it might be, it might be best to have both teams. We don't know exactly what we're dealing with. Works it could be me. any number of parasitic entities. Always a good time, those parasites. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll rig something up. Sounds good. Okay. You're going to head to the bridge, let the captain fill the captain in on what's going on? Yep. Okay. Um, you arrive on the bridge, and uh, Captain um, Gerard, or Captain, how do you pronounce his name? Hage? 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 Okay. Hage. Captain Hage is on the bridge, and uh, Cass comes onto the bridge. Um, Captain, problem solved. Uh, we rescued Miss Yates. I understand she is uh, giving birth at the moment. We captured her captors without incident. Only plot complication, sir, is uh, the doctor was saying the two of them have some sort of guest life forms aboard, which we're going to start investigating. Guest life form, huh? Yeah, that's all we know at this point. Uh, we're registering more people than there were in the room, and it looks like um, a couple of them were sharing space. Well, uh, I'll leave that to the doctor's discretion, but sounds like it qualifies for a quarantine. Uh, should, we should uh, keep them separate from their other prisoners and figure out what's going on. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to work with, with medical and, and get some scans running, see if it's biological or some other thing. How's the hostage going? I'm, or hostages, as it were. Um, I understand they're giving birth in the transporter room, sir? Well, that was not the answer I was expecting. Trans- uh, the transporter birthing suite one? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we'll hold off on the uh, inspection then. Uh, we'll, we'll hold off on the uh, investigation into the life forms until that's matters resolved. Uh, but otherwise, everybody everybody made it back intact. No shots fired. No problems. Not bad for our first away mission, don't you say? Could have gone a lot worse. I, I'm I'm pleased. We were we were a good team down there. Good work. Uh, Dasavi would have headed straight for the transporter birthing suite one. Sure. I think uh, I think probably um, Daphne is already there. She would have been yeah. first on the scene and helping deliver that baby. Yep. <laughs> With all of the nurses. There's Daphne. All right. Um, what's the Europa's next step? Heading over to DS9 or something else? 
Yeah, yeah. I, uh, now that we uh, resolved the matter on Bajor, I think it's definitely time to proceed to Deep Space Nine. Okay. Um, Ambrose, you uh, you walk, uh, you and Elizabeth finish walking um, Shikar to his. Oh well, no. <laughs> something else has something else has happened since then. Yeah, my okay. mistake. Uh, uh, Shikar um, uh, falls down the rest of the way. Uh, He's lying face down in the hallway. Um, he's still breathing. He's clearly still alive, but uh, disoriented considerably. When Where, Amber was just... called for, for medical assistance, Mar, who's obviously right there, would have come right over. Sure. Yeah, I was just going to say, we're just down the hallway. Ambrose is literally just yelling for Mar. <laughs> sure. Mar, you come bolting out of the, the conference room and, and see Shikar and company. Uh, would like to do a scan. Sure. Give me a uh, medicine and um, insight. Okay. Insight eight, medicine four, target is 12. Yes, an emergency medicine would probably apply here. Okay. Two eights. Yep. So two successes. Two successes. Um, uh, he is alive. He is stable. Um, there are no, no there are no visible injuries. There's no the tricorder doesn't pick up any kind of injuries or anything like that. Um, so yeah, medically he looks pretty healthy. Just, you know, groggy like something, um, like something knocked him over. Commander, there's apparently nothing wrong with the first minister. Not anymore. Uh... Thank you, Doctor. Yesbeth, can you uh, can you see if there's any more of whatever that was, perhaps in the two assailants we had? Uh, yeah. Or uh, anywhere else? To be honest, Commander, I'm only half sure what I did, but I will definitely <laughs> do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to coordinate with station security. I'm going to stay here with uh, the First Minister. When you come back into the room, Mills has called for um, security backup and is um, beginning to escort the Bajoran to uh, to the brig on the station. You probably turn him over to to station security if you want. Now, there was a security officer there who is uh, in charge, so their uh, security is definitely wrapping things up. But if you want to go with them, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Mills is going to go with them. Um, after that little incident, she doesn't quite know who to trust. Sure. Um, Elizabeth, you head back into the room uh, just as they're getting ready to leave, so you can scan the two if you'd like. They're both conscious and standing, um, but in uh, custody. I will uh, be very careful not to like uh, get too empathetic with them, uh, being <laughs> fellow drill. Uh, but I'll just step over, scan, uh, and uh, okay. Give me another uh, science and reason. Okay. And I'll make the difficulty only one since you have already done this once. Uh, <laughs> you detect no additional life forms. <laughs> and I'll take that threat. All right. Well, uh, they they seem clear. The security team uh, kind of just looks at you like, okay, sure. Yeah. And then begins walking them out of the room. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not... <laughs> they, don't, they don't know anything. So... Um, so the Mills is headed down to security. The Mar, Elizabeth, and uh, Ambrose are standing in the hallway, and everyone else is aboard the Europa. What would you guys like to do next? Uh, I think uh, I'm going to call in for Ambrose for a status update. Um, we can have that happen off screen, but I, yeah, if you want to, you can do it off screen, or we can we can uh, uh, we can is have there the. Any time jump here or am we, i literally getting this request for status update as i am 
standing over a semi-conscious first minister because that's uh, going to be a completely different conversation i think what we can do is we'll we'll have the uh, uh the ship is has called commander ambrose and and said the captain would like a status update uh, and then if we'd like we can we can jump to uh, uh ambrose and the captain meeting for the first time in person once uh once secu- once shikar has been officially gone over by the station doctor and is secure somewhere the second minister is secure yes Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, do you want Shakar to go to the station uh, doctor, or do you want to have them go to? Do you want to have him go to the Europa's doctor? Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, if um, if the if the Europa's docking, uh, I would I would probably suggest actually, uh. Actually, that that'll come up in the status report. I think okay. for now he's going to to station, but I will bring sure. it up with the captain. Sure. So the Europa docks. Uh, you you. Uh... Oh, question, uh, sure. Ambrose. Would you want Mar to stay with him or stay with you? I will leave that to your judgment. Mar is going to stay with the first minister. Okay. That way, you have great. one doctor you can trust for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, since it was a medical officer that tried to kill him. Uh, right. Yezabeth will go with the trill and, and nobody stops her. Sure. I assume that Ambrose is not going to stop her. I'm in the hallway. Right. Well, so is Elizabeth, So. Oh, I thought. Yeah. Well, I went inside to. Oh, stand right. The, yeah, then, you're right. Right. And then we all, well, we all would have shuffled right. out into I'm, the hallway. I'm, I suppose that's true. Yeah. I'm not trying to do this secretly, so I would let Ambrose right. know, hey, I'm going to stay with the trill. The 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 criminal trail yeah i want to i want to I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you honestly i'm curious to see if they are joint i want to find out more about them sure just remember they did try to assassinate the head of state no i i know but i i mean i i want to find out what's going on like any like everyone see what you can find out by all means Okay. Uh, the Europa docks. It's uh, not a difficult maneuver, so I'm not going to make the pilot roll because that would be silly. The first thing Europa does is run into DS9. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yes, the, the ship docks, and uh, you get a request across. Uh, well, Falks is the, the, the pilot, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, gets, a, gets a message across Falks' screen that's a little unusual. You've never seen this from. Uh, uh, from a ship's uh, council before it's, and it's just a little thing. It's a permission to to uh, synchronize with station computers. The request is coming from Eva. Yeah, Captain. Um, this is probably routine on the ship, but I just want to clear it with you first. I'm getting a request from Eva to synchronize systems with the station. I don't see the, I don't see the harm in it. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and acknowledge. Aye, right, sir. Okay, and you will do so. All right. The ship is now docked with DS9, and uh, Ambrose, I assume, is going to be heading towards the ship? Uh, you... Yeah. Okay. Let, let, me, let, me, let me actually ask, do like full-size starships physically dock with DS9, or do they just beam back and forth? Some of them dock. Uh, the Enterprise D docked at the beginning of the first yeah. episode, so it's okay. certainly possible for... And we, yeah, we've seen other Galaxy-class ships dock. Sure. Too, so. And this ship is quite a bit smaller than a Galaxy, so... Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You probably wouldn't fit in a docking ring, but you would definitely fit like, at one of the pylons. Like, yeah, like right, right there. Yeah. Yep. So you're a, you're a docking pylon, upper docking pylon too. Um, the best pylon. The best pylon. Other than lower pylon three. I like lower pylon three. <laughs> Uh, it. <laughs> uh, it just depends on where the camera is panning from. Um, so yes, uh, let us jump to uh, where would you two like to meet for the first time? Where would the captain like to have his first officer meet him for the first time? Mm, I think I I think uh, on the station. I think the captain would uh, leave the ship and speak with him because he wouldn't want to pull him away from his duties sure. uh, if he doesn't know what's going on. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so you two meet, uh, how about an ops aboard the station? 
since that way Ambrose could be uh, filing any final reports he's got with the first, the first officer of the station, mm -hmm. and uh, the two of you can meet, and that would also give you an opportunity to meet with the the station's first officer, which yeah. we can be doing off screen. Uh, you know what? Uh, real quick, I'm just going to order uh, uh, Lieutenant Shepard Nawa to begin, um, you know, standard docking, you know, uh, transfers of materials, sure. the stuff we came here to do. Sure, sure. So. Yep. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, Jorad will uh, come uh, down the hallway uh, and uh, Commander Ambrose. Uh, yeah, so I, I assume I'm at a station at at ops, just going over and, yeah. and writing reports and whatnot. Uh, still in full uh, dress uniform, though I would say the the sleeve of you know, one of, one of my sleeves have been cut by that knife, and I haven't changed yet. Uh, I'll turn and stand at attention, Captain. Uh, at ease. Don't let me interrupt what you're doing. I uh, just came to. Uh, Get a status report. Um, we've uh, handled things on the planets. Wanted to see what uh, the current situation was here at the station. That's good to know. Uh, you're on a fast ship. It's been a busy day. I, I'd be interested to read the reports for the away team. Uh, well, long story short, there was some sort of alien influence within the first minister. There was an attempt on his life. We thwarted that, and uh, then one of our enterprising young ensigns managed to pull whatever influence this was out of him. As of yet, I don't believe that influence has been secured. However, the first and second minister have been, and they're currently being looked at by medical staff. Mm. And I take it you've informed station security about this presence, and they're looking, they're giving a look for it? I have. I, uh, I've ordered the same ensign to work with them with uh, whatever contraption she's built to identify and influence. All right. Well, it uh, sounds like you've got it handled then. Um, what, what, uh, what do you think this presence's goal was? Do you have any idea what that was? My first thought would be to sabotage the Bajoran Federation relationship. That seemed to be where the influence Shakar was taking this diplomatic meeting. Hmm. Beyond well, that, I couldn't say. Right. Well, I imagine uh, I imagine a lot of uh, people want to keep the. Um, I imagine a lot of people have a vested interest in keeping Bajor out of the Federation, even still. Well, how's Shakar? How's Shakar medically? Last I heard, he was stable. He's he's fine. There's nothing physically wrong with him uh, besides some minor exhaustion that may have come from the extrication of this entity. Hmm. Right. This was not long ago. I'm finishing up paperwork, working with security, and then I did plan on speaking with the two ministers again. Of course. All right. Well, I'm not going to step on your toes on this. You seem to have the situation handled. Um, I just like regular updates. And uh, if you, if there's uh, any reinforcements you need from the Europa, uh, uh, don't you don't even have to go through me. Just uh, make it happen. Yes, Captain. I'll keep you informed. Well, if uh, if that's it, uh, I go, I'm going. I promised the doctor I'd see about some uh, supplies. So very good. I was all. I was also hoping I could get the Europa's chief medical officer to work with the station doctor, collaborate, and confirm. Well, she's she may have her hand full delivering a baby at the present moment, but uh, you're welcome to message her and see if she's available. Very good. If I may ask, the situation on the planet that was, it seems that was resolved well enough. 
Yes, uh, the uh, uh, a they a small team went in, uh, uh, managed to take out the uh, phaser. You know, we don't need to. He'll just give you the the rundown of uh, what happened. I'll read the reports. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we uh, the the civilian is safe, and we're uh, she's having her baby, from what I hear. I would caution to keep a trusted security team anywhere that Yates and the new baby goes. I assume that's simply stationed outside of uh, the med bay. They seem to be part of some sort of prophecy, and there's been a vested interest by whatever minority it may be to see them hidden away, killed. I can't oh. guarantee their lives are safe. That's fair. All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that there's a protective detail there just in case. Thank you, Captain. All right. Well, um, he, he'll nod and head off. He, he thinks he, he's pretty sure you've got things handled. He doesn't need to intervene. Sure. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Who's got something else? Uh, back on the station, we've got uh, Esabeth with the Trill. We've got Mar with Shikar. And we've got... Um, oh, we go back to the ship and have uh, the doctor deal with whatever she's dealing with on the ship. Um, at this point, uh, Yates would have been moved to sick bay and is being tended yeah. to by, you know, medical teams and or the doctor. Birthing takes a while, so, you know, you've got some time. Right. So who wants yeah, to do the doctor's priorities? Kaz is, would be interested in following up with the with the prisoners. Sure. Um, head, so you're going to head down to uh, the brig. Yep. Okay. And bring any necessary equipment, like a the heavy duty tricorder or, sc or scanners or something like that, or tie into the ship scanners. Sure. Um, there is our brig. <laughs> Can, can we say Koba's got uh, guard duty at the present? Just, sure. Okay. Um, you arrive. Uh, there are two cells that have Bajorans in them, uh, as the captain ordered quarantine for two of them. Uh, there are the two that surrendered quickly, uh, and there are the two that did not surrender quickly. Who would you like to talk to first? Uh first cast would just like to congratulate Ensign Koba, which I don't think she had a chance to do, and say, that was really brave and really well done. And I don't think this mission was succeeded without you. So, you know, great job, Ensign, on, on getting us through a really difficult situation down there. What can I say? Uh, I'm, I'm, what can I say? I'm either br really brave or really stupid, and maybe both. So the results of the count, and I'd be delighted to, keep, to work with you on away teams in the future. Uh, anything interesting happened with these guys? Um, no, they've mostly just been, uh, uh, a couple of them have been saying prayers, nothing too unusual. Okay. All right, let's see what's up with them. Um, cover me while I, while, and drop the force field. You got it. Scans. All right, so you're going to step in the two, I assume the two that are, that were reluctant to, re to, to resign. Yeah. Okay. Um, give me a, uh, first Koba, give me an insight and security, uh, at the same time, uh, Kaz, go ahead and give me a, a reason science. Okay. Oh man, I am just dying with these rolls here. Um. A 14 and 19, that's not great. No focus, two a dice. 14, the, you said insight and security, right? Correct. Yeah, that actually does succeed, so one okay. success. Okay. Plus, I, I don't know if it counts for forensics, uh, but... No, no. Okay. Uh, you're mostly just making sure that they're not moving, so you're looking to see if they have any like intentions of attacking kind of thing. Sure. Um, I have cautious science, but the sheet is cutting off the description. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, move. Um, 
either if it's too low, you can pick it up and like move it around, or uh, okay, you should it. be able to just like click into it and arrow key through. Yeah. Okay. So had I bought an extra die, I could reroll it, but I didn't, so I won't. Right. Okay. All right. So you have one success, I assume. One success. Oh yeah, I see. Okay, one success. Um, all right. Uh, I assume that. Uh, in the amount of time that we've been that you guys have been here, some of the information that Ezabeth has had has been uploaded to the uh, to the Europa, the the tricorder information dumped to the ship. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. So you have the information that uh, Ezabeth uh, used earlier. So the difficulty is only one. Okay. Um, you definitely do, in fact, detect two of these um, entities in these two people. Working with Eva and or the ship systems, can I match these readings to anything seen or reported before? Um, probably. Give me a, let's do a, a, that was your scan, so let's do some research stuff. This will be reason and yeah. science, and then we can do some questions after that. Okay. Uh, computer systems focus? Um. I'm going to say no, because you're not really doing... Well, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, because you're doing research on this one. So, yeah. Is, is this something that our resident xenoanthropologist could help with? Uh, sure. If they were requested to do so, yes. If they're requested to do so. Just just remember you have a cultural studies sort of yeah. expert. Um, I don't think she would yet, because she doesn't have any reason doesn't to know suspect there's a culture gotcha. involved. Mm-hmm. This is some sort of reading thing. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, focus used. There we go. Two successes. And one from the Europa, which is the worst I could possibly roll and still get a success. (laughs) Wow. She does science well. (laughs) Clearly. Um, she be a science ship. Uh, so you have, the difficulty was only one. Uh, I think is what I said, right? I don't know if I said the difficulty, but should have been one. So you have two questions, and what you basically find is that uh, yes, these uh, this this the energy patterns that you, these creatures have is consistent with um, those that were observed during uh, instances on Deep Space Nine that involved uh, possession, for lack of a better term, of either pa wraiths or of uh, what the Majorans call prophets, the wormhole alien species. Uh, okay, and we so don't two... know which one. Correct, but you have two questions. The, that initial answer does not give you the correct answer. It does not get you what it is, but you have two questions. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> one, can we tell the difference? Um, yes. Yes, I think you would be able to tell the difference using... Um, the information that Deep Space Nine has. Uh, they are not exactly, but the closest you can find them is that they are most similar to the Pa Wraiths. Uh, second is, is there any method of extracting and confining them or interrogating them in, in, in place? Um, there is no guaranteed way to, 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 I mean, there's no way to force them to talk, but, um, there are ways to, uh, contain, to, to separate and contain, um, at least with limited success. Uh, it has been done on Deep Space Nine in the past, but, uh, they have never been able to contain one for very long. Okay. But yes, they they can at least for short terms contain them. And by they, I mean you. Yeah. Okay. So that was my two. Mm-hmm. She will uh, pass this on to the captain and to the doctor. Okay. Well, the first thing the captain's going to do is he's going to pass that information along to the Bajoran government since. They would definitely want to know about this kind of thing. Yes. Um, and uh, I would ask them how they want us to proceed. Uh, the Bajoran uh, uh, ministers of defense, 
we'll uh, we'll we'll contact you back. And Captain, uh, we appreciate your diligence in this matter. We have not seen any of these. Um, well, since the loss of the last Kai, uh, and unfortunately the emissary, uh, it's most disturbing that we are seeing them again. We would, for the moment, we would like you to hold on to these prisoners as Starfleet uh, has shown some ability to contain them short, for short t- periods, whilst we uh, can configure our systems to be able to handle them. Um, we will then send a team to collect them if you don't mind. Of, of course. Um, is there, would you like us to let the second, well, I guess we would let the second minister know too. Well, we should test her, actually, come to think of it. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's fine. They can send their team. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. Um, the only, um, we will be sending, if you, if, if, well, we will be sending additional Bajoran security teams to Deep Space, to Deep Space Nine to ensure the security of the first and second ministers. Um, we would appreciate uh, any assistance that the Europa is able to offer in this matter. If you can provide us additional security or um, keep us informed of the things you, you discover. We'll keep you informed. Uh, as far as additional security, um, uh, we, we, we are at a, a short supply of jackboots, but uh, if you need assistance, we're happy to render it. Thank you, Captain. And again, uh, we appreciate your assistance in this matter. And your discretion. Of course. And they cut out. All right. So I will... I, I will. He, the captain will message uh, Com uh, Orani and ask what he. You met the second uh, official. Do you think we should let her in on this? Once she has been cleared, both medically uh, by security and by whatever device uh, our young Yezabeth has, yes, I believe both ministers should be should maintain authority over this matter all right well i will leave that uh leave that decision up to you then very well okay i'll see to it okay does anybody else have um, any scenes they want to do Ev? yeah when when Cass messages the doctor she will step away from what she's doing um and ask are they completely secure in the holding cell or if they if the if these wraiths choose to leave can they get out of the holding cell and run run amok among the ship the data that Cass got do they need to do anything else to secure the cells uh you would need to modulate the 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 energy fields but it wouldn't be difficult to do okay so could i also say that I uh, I have relayed all the reports I've written for station security to the Europa, so they yes. they have details on what exactly Yesbeth did. Uh, mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I suspect that at this point we are sharing information between tricorders mm-hmm. and ships, computers, and people as necessary. So, um, any any discoveries don't necessarily need to be uh, to brought up unless you guys want to have one of those, you know, boardroom scenes. <laughs> Um, uh, so I'll, that, I'll quickly calm over to to Mar. Uh, Mar, any update on the two ministers? How are they doing medically? They both seem in perfect health. Very good. Uh, Ensign Chierka, are you there as well? Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm here. Everything checking out on your end? Uh, well, I ha- they haven't allowed me in to see the prisoners yet, but... Uh, uh, I figured I'd go in and see why they did this thing, or at least why they say they did it. Have you given the second minister uh, a pass? Uh, not personally, no. Do you need me to? Uh, send your uh, send your tricorder configuration over to Dr. Marr. They no can problem. take care of it. Let me know what you find out. 
we'll send that to, to Mar. Okay. And Mar will do the thing for the second minister. All right, give me the roll. Uh, it was um, reason and science. People science, reason science. Okay. I I mean control of science also works fine. Uh, I I have to be more consistent with when I decide to use control and reason for science because I think control should be applied science and I think reason should be, you know, figuring stuff out, sorting yeah. so sor- sorting science, doing a thing. Okay, so yeah. that will be uh, ten, target is twelve. Okay. So one success. One success. Yeah, focus doesn't apply. Um, Shikar does not appear to have any any residual effects. Uh, and the first minister who, uh, sorry, the second minister also appears to be clean. Okay. Uh, Mar will report that to Ambrose. Very good. Thank you, doctor. Um, I suppose I'll be there shortly. I want to check in with... Uh, Ambrose knows this this person's name. Uh, did we establish that uh, Roe Laren was here? Uh, Roe is. So. Uh, did I say she was aboard? I don't. She is the station security She's, chief. Yeah. But I believe I had her aboard the. Uh, I believe yeah, I had her aboard the Defiant. You had her yeah. not aboard. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I, I would just like to get an update from Commander Edwin. Uh, and who's whoever is acting? Uh, is it Edwin or Edwards? Ca- Edwin, Commander Edwin. Edwin. Cool. Yep. Uh, and the actual station commander, who is Jist or Jast, I believe. Jast. Yep, Commander Jast, the Bolian. The Bolian woman. Yes. Yep. Uh, yes, uh, Commander Edwin, Commander Jast, any updates about our uninvited guest roaming the station? We've got teams investigating, Edwin, should I say. We've got teams investigating, but unfortunately, um, we haven't been able to find much. The tricorder settings that your, uh, um, science, question mark, officer, um, provided us have been helpful uh, we've been able to find some residual places where the specter has been, but um, we are not able to locate it aboard ship at, at board station at this moment. We are trying to adapt these Cardassian internal sensors to uh, scan a greater swath of area faster, but in the meantime, we have teams going deck by deck with handheld tricorders. Uh, perhaps if you have a way to keep eyes on the majority of the station we may be able to enhance whatever effect drew this entity out of the first minister by amplifying it through Europa's deflector array Mm. certainly with an effort with an attempt I'll pass that along the uh, the station uh, executive officer um, uh just uh, looks and says, um, my security is getting stretched pretty thin. Uh, the Bajorans are sending more security teams to the station, but be honest, Commander, what, who do you trust at the moment? <laughs> um, hmm. Right now I trust Dr. Marr. <laughs> Well, Dr. Mar isn't going to be able to provide security to the entire station, but... <laughs> no. The sensors that were adapted for the changeling threat, are they still in place? Could we provide the same sensor, suite, sensor sweep uh, that Yezabeth has created for any incoming security officers as they are beamed, up, beamed or shuttled aboard? We can certainly attempt to adapt them. They are Federation sensors. We should be able to do something with those. It's a good call. I have looked over most of the personnel reports from the Europa. I'm sure they have plenty of good men on the ship. I simply have men and women and otherwise. I simply have not met them personally. Very well. Um, We'll make do. Uh, I'll have my teams adjust the sensors for all the docking facilities 
Um, and we'll get teams <laughs> underway. Have there been any... <laughs> Uh, uh, Azabeth invents a way to find to finally get rid of the pot rates. Ambrose, I still don't trust her. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Um, it's fantastic. We're, yeah, we'll uh, we're, we'll see about that. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I believe that is that is specifically one of one of my values. Uh, anyway. Um, Right. Uh, have there been any, obviously, at, at least this entity that came aboard through Shikar was found either a while ago or out on his tour. Uh, have there been any recent artifacts brought aboard the station that may house or provide sanctuary for any of these spirits? None that we're aware of. The most recent thing that we remember or that we remember hearing about was the Enterprise D Enterprise E's discovery of the Orb of Memory. Where's which was which was presented to Shikar. Where's that currently? Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's in the Yakan province on Bajor. Uh, it is one of the two provinces that is having the troubles. Fake orb. Well, that could be indicative of the situation. Certainly, we may want to. That's that's spreading ourselves even thinner, but we may want to check that out as well. Yeah, the um, the Bajorans are not um, particularly keen on the idea of outsiders um, handling their orbs without. I will direct talk supervision. To ministers about this. I'm sure they have a vested interest in this now. All right. I will leave it to you. Um, I am going to attempt to get word to the Defiant yet again, although we haven't heard from any of them in a painfully long time. Thank you, Commander. Numbers out. Anybody else? Um, in the conversation with Cass, Dasavi will close it out by asking, uh, Cass, can you please recommend to the captain we scan anyone who comes aboard the ship from the station? I would... I don't know exactly how these things work or if they would necessarily attempt to infiltrate our people, but it could be disastrous. That recommendation has already been forwarded to all of the Europa security <laughs> teams. <laughs> and Cass will agree, and she will uh, scan herself in Koba, like right off. Okay. And then calm the captain and, and say, you're probably hearing this from a bunch of people, but the doctor said it too, so. Turns out both Cass and Koba are okay. <laughs> Koba <laughs> Koba will absolutely pretend like he's possessed for a moment before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just totally expecting it. Yeah. Parry. I'm going to shoot this kid. <laughs> uh, just grab your ear with your own hand. My earring. <laughs> um, uh, all right. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have anything they want to do? Uh, um, Elizabeth wanted to talk to the. Yeah, the other trail, yeah. The other trail. The assassins. So, let me minimize these so I get back to where we're actually at with people. Mills is there just kind of warily watching everyone in the room. Sure. Um, so you're in the Deep Space Nine's, uh, you know, big brig area. Uh um, also in there is the, uh, the Bajoran that was captured. Mills is there, but you are otherwise left alone in, uh, in the brig to have your conversation. The uh, real quick, I want to see if station security has identified them yet. Oh, um, sure. Uh, the Bajoran is, uh, Bajoran, um, security agent by the name of, uh, Gen. Um, and the trill is a uh, one of the uh, attending physicians under Dr. Bashir, 
uh, who goes by the name of Relin. Uh, Relin Call. She's an undroined trill. Uh, I'll uh, go. Uh, what the hell reason? What reason could either of you have to want to kill Ambassador Shikar? Did uh. Mills just kind of she she tries and is slightly unsuccessful for at first to hide a a smile and a snort at at Cherka's very blunt uh, investigative style. Um, Gen uh, doesn't say anything. He just kind of uh, looks at you and, and there's a little bit of contempt in his face, but uh, he doesn't say anything. Um, Relin, on their hand, uh, Lieutenant Liren, Relin, uh, is visibly shaking. Um, like, obviously uh, quite um, upset. Uh, I, I, uh, they, I can't, I can't tell you, uh, Ensign, the, the, uh, there's a lot of danger involved in this, but I didn't, I didn't want to kill Shakar. I just, I didn't have a choice. You did what did your did your hand lift itself what do you mean you didn't have a choice the uh, I can't I can't really tell you it's it involves my brother he's um, he's one of them he's one of their uh, I, I don't know what they call them but um I, if I didn't do what they told me to do, I, I'm afraid they would, they would, they'd use him, they'd kill him or they, I don't know. I don't know what they would do. I don't, I don't know. I just, I didn't feel like I had a choice and I don't know. Do you think your brother, if he wasn't possessed, would want you to do this? Land yourself in jail for the rest of your life? I'm... I'm, and she, she kind of like, uh, she's, she tears up quite a lot. And I don't, uh, I, uh, I'm ashamed. I didn't, I didn't, I, I hope he forgives me. Look, I, but you, he'll forgive you if you help us, uh, if you help us figure out what's going on. That's the only way you're going, anyone's going to be able to forgive you. I, I only know so much. I mean, uh, the I I can help what I I can try to help, but I don't know what I can know to help you. I, she's definitely got a, a, a sense of agitation. Uh, like she feels like she wants. Like you could, you could tell pretty quickly that she she feels like she would like to help you, but she's not entirely certain how she could help you. Who did you talk to that was behaving like this? Give us a list of. People you've been dealing with, including uh, your brother. Um, well, my brother, again, um, there were a couple other security agents from the, the, uh, for the Bajoran team and she'll say there, she'll, she'll give you their names. Um, there were, uh, messages that came from, uh, uh, uh encrypted channels. I, I, I don't know who they were. I, I don't know who it was, but it, it came from, um, the, I, the Vedic, uh, I think anyways, I traced it to the, to the Vedic assembly building, but, um, I, I don't know who it was. They were, uh, they were encrypted and they were blurred and I, they just, uh, they were threatening messages. Okay. You'll give me access to your messages. So that way we can go through them and see what you saw. If, if the evidence shows that you did this under duress, you know, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, Chirka, before uh, you look at those, could the messages have influenced this behavior? Uh, 
Is that something you should be cautious of? I, I unless we're unless I don't think so. It seems like this is being passed through through proximity, but with the orbs, um, specifically this orb of memory. Uh, that's my guess. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think I don't think the messages passed anything along. That they, they both came up clean. I don't think that they either of these people were possessed. Okay, you know about more about that than I do. Maybe we'll see. If I give you all the information, you'll 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 help you'll you'll help me. All I can promise is that we'll find out who did this and we'll find the truth of what's been going on. All right. Um, okay. And, and we'll try and help your brother. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and she gives you the, the passwords and codes to her, uh, to her logs and, and uh, computer systems. What about you, Gen? Uh, what's why did you do this? He uh, he he looks, you know, he 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 stands up and looks at you and gets close to the to the energy field and says, "She'll take a step back." Um, he kind of gets a, a big grin in his face and because I can't stand you. Look. Sometimes I think that when I wake up in the morning, but, uh, you know, uh, I think I'm all right. What do you have against me? I don't want my planet ruled by any of your kind ever again. Your non-Bajoran kind. Oh, you're one of those guys. I see. Well, it's not your call to make. I'm not the only one. Yeah? How many of, there are, of you are there? There can't be that many. There was enough of us to defeat the Cardassians. We'll get rid of you two. The people who fought the Cardassians seem to be the ones who realize they need our help to keep so something like that from happening again. Maybe. He just kind of turns and goes and sits back down. Maybe. She'll shake her head. She'll go to Mills and she'll say, I think we've gotten about all we're going to get from these two. Mills kind of rolls her eyes. <sighs> yeah. Well, uh, listen, I don't know anything about cryptography or anything. I don't know anything about like security systems or anything like that. Do you think you'd be able to get, do you think the two of us working together might be able to crack the code? Should be able find to. Out they, find out where these were, these were coming from? Shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. Let's, let's go then. Um, so. Do we have any of our, our people or is it all the Bajoran security there? Uh, there are Starfleet security there as well, but it's mostly Bajorans. Okay. There's no one else from the ship there. Right. Yeah. I think Mills will kind of cast a uncertain glance around and kind of shrug them. All right. We'll head off to yeah, I think we should go back to the ship to do it since the ship that way we could get the ship's assistance on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody else have anything before they get back to the ship and do that? Kaz, Ambrose, the captain, anybody else? No? Nope. Okay. Uh, we cut uh, some time passing and uh, we get to uh, you are probably also in the I, don't know, I mean everything happens in the in the in the library so um you guys are back aboard the ship. Okay. Um, this is also pretty much where Cass spent the most of, you know, most of her time. Mm -hmm. Was it Cass? Was that was it, who's here talking to the talking to Eva? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, I'd like to try cracking cracking the code. Or maybe, right. maybe Cash should do it since uh, she's a main character. Um, okay. Oh. So the Ezebeth and Mills come in and, and Kaz, I assume you're working on some sciencey project in here. Um, oh yeah. So go ahead. Interact. Well, uh, we, we got these from the assassin. Uh, we got these from the assassins. One of them seems to just be a, 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 a wackadoo. Um, that's a technical term, by the way. Um, the other one, <laughs> The other, one seems, yeah. the other one, she regrets what's happened. She says that her brother's being held hostage by by some one of the presences. Okay. Uh, she gave us all the information she had to help us uh, figure out where the rest of them are. And, but uh, a, a lot of it's encrypted. I was hoping oh. we could get something from it. Yeah, we can work on that. Come on. Let's see what we can make of this. Eva, fun time. We the a project. Uh, the image appears on the computer. Uh, greetings, Commander. I am looking forward to a new project. What do we have? Uh, we could use her help breaking a code. And Cass will ask for um, Yesbeth to upload the information and just to get to work. Okay. With their, with their assistance. Sure. Um, this is a multi-person assist, uh, I assume, which yep. I'm not sure how that actually works in this game, but we're going to go ahead and say everybody can assist. Um, the difficulty is going to be, uh, I would say normally five, but since she gave you some of the passwords and, and information that you wanted already, uh, we're going to drop it to four, and uh, I think Kaz was the lead. Yep. Uh, control science, focusing computer system supply. Um, sure. Uh, I would also allow, um, insight and security or control security or even reason and security. Uh, not from Cass. <laughs> she'll, <laughs> she'll stick with control sides. Sure. Uh, the ship, 16. the ship is going to assist with computers and security. Okay. Focus used. Yes. Ooh, we're down to one momentum. Uh, we're feeling lucky. Let's go, let's go for it. Oh. Two successes. Two. Uh, I assume that that roll from Gerard, that was a failure. Yep. So uh, we're waiting on one more roll. There we go. Um, I will also use control and security, which is a 14. Okay. So that's three successes out of the four you needed? Yep. Okay. And ship assist? Ship rolled uh, zero successes. Mm. Oh. Um, Damn. Apparently, Eva is not good at puzzles. <laughs> um, I, however, am going to let you succeed at a cost. Okay. Um, the cost will be that some of the data is corrupted. Um, but what you get, uh, and and Eva will reply with, I am sorry, Commander. I. It's Commander, right? Lieutenant? Or it's Lieutenant. Lieutenant, Commander. yeah. Yeah, Lieutenant. I apologize, Lieutenant. I apparently need to... Spend more time practicing puzzles. Uh, Probably won't be the last time we come across something like this. So yeah, let's let's work let's work on getting your capacities up in that area. Uh, but what you get uh, is, <coughs> um, you find the messages that she's talking that that uh, that uh, Relin was talking about. There are a number of messages that uh, come from what she traced back to being the Vedic assembly. Um, they are obscured um, and voice modulated, uh, and they appear to be done analog, so it's not a digital like recreation kind of. It wouldn't be something you could digitally um, separate. But uh, it is a lot of threatening that her that her brother has been taken by one of these. Um, th these things seem to like the trill a lot, um, uh, but it will kill the brother if uh, if she doesn't do this. If she doesn't, if she doesn't stop Shakar and his, um, uh, his meddling in Bajoran, uh, sovereignty. Okay. 
Which may be slightly confusing since he's also the one that's <laughs> fighting it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Actually, Mills will will point that out. So kind of look confused for a moment and look at, at Cherka. Didn't the commander say you pulled one of those things out of Shakar? Yeah, that's what it looked like. I it uh, you know I I I just uh, re-channeled the feedback resonance back on it, and it definitely seemed to get rid of it. If they're hedging their bets, they're doing a really poor job of it. They seem to be counteracting themselves. Maybe Why possess not... Shakar and then order him assassinated? Maybe they're not communicating or they can't communicate or they can't communicate when they're in bodies. Maybe. Hmm. It does seem like a pretty weak way to run a conspiracy. Is there any way to trace the location back? <laughs> Um, you could possibly do it. It would be fairly difficult since these are older messages, but they do have uh, they do have traces running them already to the uh, the Vedic assembly. You could you could certainly try to retrace those traces. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, that'll be computers and science, or well, uh, for the ship anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'll say reason and science, or. Uh, I'll take control, insight, or reason, and science. Okay. Uh, focusing computer systems. And, of course, you guys can assist. Uh, how do people feel about my spending that last momentum, which I can re-roll? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so let's go to three, and I can re-roll that. Oh, I'm gonna, the ship is going to do control. It's going to do computers and security still. And I'd like to reroll that Ooh. 19. Or that re-roll 20? 20? The 20. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> really reroll the 20. The other direction. Yeah, okay. Okay, so 15, 9, and 19. Yep. Uh, the 15 is just, and 9 are, that's two successes. Okay. You said control, reason, or which, and science? Uh, insight would also work. Nice. I would also allow security. You guys are basically just doing a, a security trace at this point. Okay. Then I'll do security. Control and security. Which... Pretty pretty wide open on this one, really. Okay. Science or security for most everything on this one. I'll take one of those. All right. So that's uh, two, three, four, six. five, six successes. Six successes. Okay. Uh, that leaves you with uh, momentum. In fact, I will say you guys have. I don't think I told you what a difficulty on that one was today. <laughs> no. no. I will. I will say it was two because it probably would have been higher than that, but I don't want to bone you guys so two that'll leave you four questions you can ask okay and um, Cass has studious as well so that'll leave you five questions you can ask um so the first thing you get is that the the trace does go through the vedic assembly uh in fact it may it, it you can tell it probably originates from the vedic assembly but uh goes out of the assembly and comes back to make it look as though it was um it's actually to obfuscate that it was coming from the assembly to begin in the first place. Like it was, does that make sense? Like they no. sent it from there, but they sent it, they, they, they VPN'd out and then VPN'd back in to make it look like it was a Vedic assembly, even though it was mm-hmm. the Vedic assembly. It's hard to explain, but it does look like someone inside the assembly was trying to make it look like somebody inside the assembly was doing it, but trying to mask they were doing it. Yeah. Do we have a specific location, like somebody's office or something like that? Um, or phone booth down the hall. Right. Yes. Uh, that'll give you two. I'll take two two of the momentum to, to give you the exact location. It is uh, uh, Prylar Etan's office. He is one of the Prylars who uh, was actually aboard the station recently that you guys were to talk to. Uh, didn't talk to, but could have talked to. Uh, he's actually on the station uh, with the uh, the group that was... At the the temple earlier on, when yeah. Ezabeth and them were going to talk to people, what was that name? Prylar Etan. Etan, yeah. yeah. Can we tell? No, and that is where it's actually coming from, not where it is like looked to ping back to loop through from. Correct. That is where it actually originated from. Okay. Can we tell 
where it was meant to look like it was pinging from? Can we get an exact location on that, or is that too much? Sure. Uh, I would do the other two for that uh, to give you the exact. Or I'll give you, it'll, it'll take one. Um, so you still have one left. Uh, no, you have two left because that'll be three. So yes. Um, yes. It looks as though it was meant to appear to have originated from the second minister's office. Aha. Okay. This is all good info. Okay. You have two more questions. Which I'm not sure there's two more questions to ask, but you have two yeah. more if you want them. <laughs> uh, I got nothing. You can just bank them. Bank the momentum. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with that. Okay. What's next? Uh, so you said the Prior Eton is still aboard the station. Yes, as far as you're aware, he's still aboard station. Uh, the, Cass was, would calm the captain and pass this information on, and like immediately. Okay. Uh, well, so, uh, he will forward it over to Ambrose since Ambrose is taking the lead on this situation, yep. uh, and is also the security officer. So. <laughs> Uh, he'll say, uh, "Sounds like uh, we he, sounds like we should pay this Prylar Etown a visit." I'm thinking the same thing. Good work over there. Well, I think it's time I have another meeting with the ministers. Okay. Which minister are you going to talk to first, or do you want to get them both at the same time? I'd like to get them both in the same room. Okay. Yeah. That'd be delightful. Uh, you should bring all of us. Uh, just going to put that out there. Uh, yes, I would like to invite Mar and Yezabeth. And and Mills. Yeah, we're, just, every, everyone's coming along. Yeah. Mar has been keeping them under observation yeah. in, in medical. Yep, yep they're in sick bay at the moment. So, um, All right. You guys arrive, and Shikar and Asram uh, are there, as are the rest of the crew. Which there's just too many. There are too many faces to get all on one screen. <laughs> uh-huh. So this is a big. This is a big screen here. All right. So this is your cast at the moment. So you are in sick bay. Um, they are both uh, resting comfortably, uh, and Mara has seen to it that you are otherwise in a secure, well, a an unattended section of the sick bay. So it's just this group of people. Okay. Let me, uh, what was her name? Uh, Wad. Wadim? Asram Wadim. Asram, yes. Asram Wadim. Uh, First Minister Shakar, Second Minister Asram. How are you both feeling? Shakar looks and says, I feel a lot better now. I, uh, Bit of a headache. Other than that, I feel good. Um, Asram, uh, just you know, she looks. She looks at the looks at you and says, "Well, I, I feel fine. I don't know why I've been kept here this long, but I have no complaints." I apologize. I'm mostly responsible for that. Our good doctor here likes to be thorough. Uh, though there is a lingering security threat on station, I figured this would be the most secure area for the both of you. Sure. To that note, the crew of the Europa have been busy trying to put all these pieces together. This seems to be a larger conspiracy. And I will have to admit uh, a sizable ignorance to the structure of your religious institutions. But there does seem to be some connection between at least one of your prylars and some sort of terrorist group. 
I they mean, both these are very serious accusations. Right. They both look a little bit. Um, they both look surprised. Um, go ahead and give me an insight and command roll. I'm going to say the difficulty is one, but this is the one roll you're going to get for the round. So any any additional momentum you get, you'll spend throughout the course of it to to influence things. Make sense? Insight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Insight command. Uh, yeah, again, I don't think I really have any good focuses for interrogation. Interrogation <laughs> or really really talking to people. Uh, you have two momentum. I mean, could could I could I make the case for for inspiration that I've had multiple though I guess Sakar was sort of, you know, out of his head for for most of my encounters sure uh, but i have had fairly meaningful and i would think inspirational conversations with both these people to to try to get them at a at a good spot to you know hear me out on all this sure i'll like okay. i'll allow it okay uh and i will uh i can't i can't use bold but i will i will take another momentum if that's okay That's three dice. Uh, difficulty one, normal complication range. Correct. Yep. And insight command, you said? Yeah. Gotcha. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Four successes. Four successes. So you succeed by three. Um, all right. Let me get a chit here so I can keep track of when I have you use those up. I'm gonna use quarter inch to three to to, to... headphone jacks. I'm using headphone jacks to keep count. <laughs> All right. Um. So yes, they look. They both look uh, shocked. Um, you're not completely sold though on uh, on Asram's shock. It it may be a little overplayed. So I, I would be presenting the evidence for for all of this. Mm -hmm. um, of course. And I, th and, uh, I think I do remember reading a section of the book about how evidence works, but I don't remember uh, I don't know. Some, some sort of advantage. But I, I would be sharing these uh, right. uh, the fairly extensive trace that was that was done back and forth uh, for for this this note. Right. I see. Uh, Shakar says, uh, "I see." Um, it's definitely condemning, but we don't have any proof that Prylar actually that the Prylar actually sent the message. Just that it was sent from his office. Who else would have access to his office, to his computer? That's true. Uh, Asram uh, speaks up. What is the motivation behind all of this? What is his? What does he hope to achieve? The assassination of Shakar? For what reason? Well, if our Bajoran friend in holding is to be believed, uh, it is the terrorist cell seems to think Shakar has been meddling too much. Shakar can also make a great, uh, it's a great way to make a martyr. Oh. Shakar looks as well. Maybe it's, it wasn't as foolish as we thought. Shakar looks as well. It's not the worst fate that people have spec out, specified out for me in the past, but um, if I'm under the control of one of these things, um, I don't. I don't understand the connection. Do you, from what I, from what I could gather, you were doing, or you at least intended to do everything you could to oppose, perhaps even discredit, the relationship between Bajor and the Federation. Well, if that, I remember. I mean, I like I, it wasn't going to be successful. Hmm. Killing you to keep that. 
idea alive would easily be the next best thing. Do you remember anything about your state? <sighs> I flashes and like a dream state. I, I'm sure it'll come back to me as time goes on. The Dr. Marr has, in, has told me the memories are mine. I just have to be able to access them. Um, what were you going to say, Elizabeth? Do you, did you feel any different when you, before? Do you feel different now than you did a day ago? Yes, I definitely do. Uh, the last thing I distinctly and clearly remember is, um, I had an orb experience. Uh, do we think that the orb of memory is tied to this? Evidence does seem to be pointing in that direction. Hmm. A question though, ministers, what would you see as the consequences to Bejor if the assassination had taken place? What would come next? Uh, as for him, well, I would become the first minister. Um, would there be, would that be accepted or would there be further uprisings or disturbances? As far as I'm aware, I would be relatively accepted. I didn't lose the vote uh, by very much, but uh, the way our system works is when the first minister was elected, uh, those who came after or those who ran against Shikar were were um, appointed as ministers based on their successive amounts of uh, representation that they received. Uh, they they were to represent better. So I I received the second most number of votes. Uh, that's why I was chosen to be the second minister. And there would not be large scale violence such as the followers of the prophecy or might be looking to instigate. I perhaps not towards her. Not that I'm aware of. I, I can't believe that people would have that sort of violence for me. It wouldn't look good on the Federation. Shikar is not, and that's definitely true, would not look especially, good on the Federation. Especially considering I believe uh, the first assailant was wearing one of our uniforms. Or do I have that mixed was. up? No, yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, she was okay. a Starfleet officer. Yeah. As for him, if uh, Shakar was killed by a member of the Federation, we would have been driven out out of here. There'd be no saving this relationship. But not the ten thousand dead that would trigger the prophecy. Shakar, Shakar, kind of like raises eyebrows. Ten thousand dead. That would have been something we have to look into. <laughs> the thing is that in either case, whether I survived with this entity or if the second minister became first minister, uh, it's been no secret that, that Wasserim has been opposed to the Federation joining. That must be... That seems like the most likely uh, outcome that was desired with, by these things was that uh, one way or the other, the Federation was out of here. Precisely. Mm. And we suspect that Prylar uh, Eton is the, the primary culprit here. I suppose we should have him arrested. Was the Prylar involved in the collection of the orb of memory he was one of the first people that would have been given control over the orb once we once i returned uh to set it up in the in the temple for the uh for the people to see and he would have had more exposure to it than most anyone yes All right. Uh, I don't seem to have my communicator on me. Uh, we should certainly have him arrested, though. I would assume that it's something Bajoran's current security should handle. 
Of course. Uh, if he if he authorizes us to, I don't see why it, I don't see how it could be a violation. Of. First minister, it might be I... better optics. Agreed. Um, yes, I, I will have the I will have Bajoran security arrest him immediately. Um, with one of your momentum, uh, Ambrose, you'll note uh, um, that there is a, a vague uh, release of tension on uh, um, Asram. In in response to anything in particular? Uh, in response to the, the Prylar being ordered to be arrested. Okay. Um, Shakar uh, uh, calls for one of the security guards to come in and, and orders them to go uh, to, to bring in Prylar Eton and please be gentle with him. I, there is supposed to be a separation between the two powers of the, the between the Vedic uh, the religious sex and, and us. I don't want this to influence anything. Uh, be gentle with him. And they, they, the security guard nods and as he's leaving, you can hear him call for several other security guards. They go off to, uh, to assumingly affect an arrest. Uh, I suppose I have a lot to thank you for commander. The Europa has, uh, a good first officer in our hands and a good, I don't know what the rest of you do on board that ship, but you do it well. <laughs> it's a group effort. Uh, Asram looks at, at the, the, at, at you, Ambrose, and agreed. I don't know where the, Bajor, I don't know where Bajor would be without all of you. The the loss of First Minister First Minister Shakar would have been a a death nail to any future consideration to join the Federation. First Minister, if you don't mind my asking, what is your intention to go forward now? Shakar thinks for a moment. Well. I still think that it is best for Bajor to join the Federation, but it may be that we need to get our own house in order before we take any steps. I'd hate to say that this incident would allow these, um, these people to win, but maybe we're not ready yet. Player question at this point. And I think a reasonable answer is no, so I'll just throw that out there, but I'm going to ask anyway. Mm -hmm. um, what if Mar proposed a mind meld to, to go back to and pull up the orb experience? Hmm. Uh, you could certainly try. Okay. Make the offer. Uh, Mar will make the offer, you know, and they'll say, um, I have rather a large degree of experience in this area. I am a, what our people call a kolinaru, something of a, a master of this, of the separation of logic and emotion and have experience with the melding of minds. First Minister, would you be amenable to joining your mind with mine so that we could search together to find out what happened in the Orb experience? Uh, he looks at the, the second minister and he looks at, then he looks at a Ambrose. Um, what exactly would that entail? Our minds would merge to some degree. I can control the extent of it and lead you to a particular memory. You, you would not be Neither of us would be laid bare to the other, but we would be traveling together and you would know my mind as I knew yours. Hmm. We would, we would re-experience re this memory of yours together. Yeah. Give me a... Um, 
Give me a, a roll to see if you can persuade him for that, if you want to try okay. to persuade could, him. Could I assist with that uh, and, and simply chime in? If there's one person I would trust myself with, it would be Mar here. He has uh, my confidence or whatever that means. Sure. You still had two momentum left over from your original roll, so if you want to use them here to give him those two momentum, or to allow him to use those two momentum, I would allow that. <laughs> um, uh, as, an, as an assist to, to, to help him. So you have two free momentum, essentially. Uh, and give me a um, reason, I guess. I don't know. What, okay. what, what do you think would be best to try to convince him of this? Uh, command, obviously. Um, reason and command, I assume, because you're, uh, you're a Vulcan, or presence. Or how about medicine to ex- to explain the process? Sure. Okay. Uh, so reason, medicine. Sure. So target would be twelve. What's the difficulty? Uh, I'm going to say the difficulty is going to be pretty high. I'm actually going to spend some threat here. Um, the man has had a lot of minds in his own mind the last couple of weeks. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to spend yeah, three. Uh, and make the you know what I've got them I'm gonna spend them <laughs> uh, I'm gonna spend four and make the difficulty five okay and how much momentum do we have you have a total of three momentum okay uh, so buy two dice roll four no nothing applies uh, uh, the, the difficulty is what what did you say three or four I added four. It was one, so it's five. The, the difficulty is five. Ooh, Correct. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Be, before we go spending all our momentum, what exactly are we trying to get out of this? What happened in the orb experience? If there were orders, or what was in the orb, or I don't know. Just to recall the orb experience, essentially. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's pure fishing. And We're close to the end of the session anyway, so you don't, mm-hmm. you, the, or the, the momentum probably won't come into a play uh, any further, so not a bad time to use it. Yeah, I'd say go ahead and spend all three. <laughs> okay. That's, that's my vote. Uh, rolling four dice, and he said, right, I'm just rolling this and then using my character sheet. So that is four. Oh, hey. What? Wow. That's nice. all over the place. Uh, okay. I have no idea what to do with it. <laughs> Two, three, yep. four, five. So we have That's six. Success right? with complication. I love it. Six and yep. complication. All right. Um Okay. I've got it. Uh he kind of like, yeah, I think uh I think it might be good to know to know a little more. Um, and Asram steps forward and says, First Minister, I don't think now is the best time. I think it would be best if we wait a little bit longer before we try to recall such things. The orb experiences are so personal. Are you sure you want to share that? Are you sure you want to relive that? Are you sure we can afford to relive that? Um... Shikara looks at you and, and Ambrose and Mr. Marr, I uh, I would love very much to find out more about this, but I think the First Minister may be correct. Can we hold off and do this another time? Just Marr, please. As part of my culinary experience, I have transcended gender. Another time is, is distinctly possible. Um, however, given that one of your religious leaders is in custody over this issue, knowledge might guide your actions in a way that continued ignorance might not. Uh, Asram replies with, it may also, and please, no offense, Mar, more people meddling around in your mind, First Minister. Perhaps you should get your own set, your 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 mind straight uh, before you have someone else meddling in there. Well, the first minister looks at, at at Ambrose. You trust him. I trust you. But the first minister has a good point. The second minister has a good point. 
What would you do in my position, Commander? Honestly, I do not envy your position, First Minister. I like to have as much information as I can going into a situation. Unfortunately, I hate to compare it this way, but our... I don't, I don't know how much of our conversation you may recall, unfortunately. Um, given that, yes, there seems to be influence within the Vedic Assembly and an entire province is in conflict over this situation, possibly directly related to this orb, knowing as much as you can about this orb experience could help guide you to, as you said, set your house. Hmm. The uh, Asram one last makes one last effort. To, there's nothing to say, uh, First Minister, that the Federation won't try to influence you the same way that these did, these things did. And Mar will just look at her and raise one eyebrow. <laughs> uh, Shikara says, uh, very well. I'll allow it, but uh, don't stray. I've had enough people looking around in my head. If it of course. alleviates any of your worries, Mar, I order you to do only what is necessary to help the first minister experience this orb vision again. Nothing more. So shall be. All right. So start your mind milled. Okay. My mind to your mind, your thoughts to my thoughts. Uh, is there a role for my mind? No, there is, but I don't know what it is. Do you, uh, does anybody have that offhand? It's a task with a difficulty of at least one, which can be opposed by an unwilling participant. Momentum may be spent to gain more information or per perform deeper exchanges. The link goes both ways. Complications can result in pain, disorientation, or lingering emotional or behavioral difficulties. Okay. Um, so the difficulty be one, he's willing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't see anything else, so go ahead and make the roll. Uh, okay. I'm going to hold on to those two, uh, well, those two threat because I'm probably going to need to use them. <laughs> Focusing composure. Okay. Uh, okay, so control menace again. Target is 14. Focus applies. Two dice. Oh, yeah. So two successes. Two successes. All right. So you do the, your, my mind to your mind. Um, Shikar is, uh, you, you, as you enter Shikar's mind, you push past a lot of um, latent resistance. So he's not actively resisting you, but it's, he clearly has a very powerful mind. Um, uh, you dig in a little deeper and you can, you can push past his, his, um, his baser personality and stuff like that. And you start getting into the memories of, uh, of the last several months and you can see this swirling mass of, of um, people and experiences that he's had that are, that are there that he remembers, but he can't focus on them at the moment. Um, and as you push farther and farther in, you finally get to the moment where he's talking to Captain Picard uh, and he's presented with the orb and he, uh, he takes the orb back to his ship and... Um, uh, dismisses the 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 Vedics, or the well the the religious personnel who are there with him, uh, and he opens the orb and begins his experience. Um, there are flashes of a burning Bajor. Uh, there is a child who is uh, a young uh, a young man who is in a Starfleet uniform, looks uh, vaguely a cross between Sirik Lawton and Avery Brooks. <laughs> um, the, uh, the child is standing at the head of, uh, um, 
the, at the top of a stair uh, overlooking a uh, city of Bajor, one of the cities on Bajor, hard to tell which one. Um, but there are, uh, there are thousands of people, um, both dead and alive, kind of standing around uh, at the base of the, the thing. Um, and as he's standing there and the, the camera kind of pans around a bit, from behind him steps out uh, a shape. Um, and as the shape becomes to, become, begins to get into focus, um, you get the feeling that it is this entity, this, um, uh, or at least it's connected to this entity in some way. Uh, um, and uh, there's a sense of, of power and uh, influence, um, but it doesn't necessarily feel like the influence and power are coming. Uh, it, it feels like they're coming from a person. It's hard to explain. Hang on. Let me try this one more time. As they're coming up, you're getting the feeling all around you of the sense of the 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 orb creature that you had uh, that you had taken care of earlier, but it does not appear to be coming from this person walking up. Um, and just as they begin to get into focus, there's a flash of light, and I'm going to spend these last two moment threat, and you're ejected from the mind meld. Ooh, okay. Astrum looks. Uh, uh, as as the things as it breaks and he she looks she says to you, what did you see? Mar will hold back and wait for Shakar to take the lead. He uh he he looks around the room and the it was quite intense, Mar. I am um, doctor. That it was, sir, and rather unexpected in its power. I recognized the... Not the person standing, not, not the man, the... the other one, the... There was something familiar about her. I don't know. I was able to gain nothing more specific myself. Perhaps with some time, this will become more clear to me. Indeed, and your mind, sir, has formidable defenses, which may have seen you through in better condition than most would have would have managed. Well, um... I think I'm going to avoid avoid any orb experiences for a little while. Probably a good call, seeing as how they seem to be turning all your people crazy. Yes. Speaking of which, we should probably recall some of those orbs. I appreciate everything you have done. Thank you. Marvel just bow. All right, ministers, I believe uh, we will be reassigned fairly quickly, but if there's anything before then we could do to assist, uh, feel free to reach out. Of course, uh, we will. Um, and thank you, Captain. Everything, you have a fine crew, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again sometime. I hope so. Perhaps we shall have uh, another dinner where you are more present. <laughs> I would like that. I would also like that. He stands up and kind of tucks him, tucks in his, uh, his, his clothing a little bit more dignified than he's been recently. Uh, well, since falling to the ground in shrieking agony. Um, what do you think, Wadin? Should we get back to the business of governing Bajor? She uh, she looks at him, she looks at Mar, and then she looks at Ambrose. She looks back at Mar, looks back at Shakar, says, I think so. And then the two uh, kind of nod and move out the room. And they leave the room. It's just the four of us, right? Yep. Okay. Um, Mills turns to Ambrose and says, sir, I may be stating the obvious here 
but the second minister rushed a little too quickly and pushed a little too hard against the first minister regaining his memories and seemed too concerned and too eager about what he saw. I think that's an appropriate show of caution. She is a woman of deep spirituality. I mean, I for one would hate somebody going into my head. So I totally get where she's feeling. Orb experiences are supposed to be extremely personal. Sharing them is unusual at the best of times within their own culture with others. I can understand her hesitation and her uh, concern, but Certainly. I agree we should, we, I, I suppose, unfortunately, the Federation as a whole should be vigilant as to uh, the office of the whole of this planet. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, anybody else have anything else they want to do before we wrap up for the night? I am actually curious uh, if there is any fallout for, for Jisa. If anyone wants to bring up uh, <laughs> that, that transporter call. Yeah. Um, a, yes. If we want to do that now, next episode. I, well, I'd like to resolve that, and I'd also like to resolve the birth See sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, um, I forgot. Yeah, Savi <laughs> will definitely have things to say both to Jisa and um, I want to have a more private conversation with um, Cass. Um, yeah. But a lot of what she says and how she approaches that is going to depend on what happens with the birth. Sure. Um, so with the birth, uh, whoever is doing the delivery that I believe that was. Uh, the nurse, right? Lieutenant Daphine? Is that who was? Uh, yeah. Sure. You were the primary there. You were the first one on the scene. We'll have you do it. Uh, yeah. This will be a uh, control and medicine role. Uh, can Tong assist? <laughs> Absolutely he can. Yeah. I, I can almost guarantee he's not going to be all that helpful, but he is there with the medical tricorder just frantically like, I don't know what I'm doing, but... That's one success. Okay. Uh, whoa. Uh, yeah, this is just, this is just one. Uh, the, sh um, the ship should be able to assist too. That's so. true. Is she actually giving birth before we get back to the ship? Well, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn it, Tong. Oh. <laughs> that, that wasn't Tong. That was the ship. Oh, okay. Damn it, the ship. <laughs> yeah. Damn it, the ship. Uh, what, what was Tong rolling anyway? Control he medicine? Puzzle Control me. medicine, yeah. Uh, he actually got a success. Nice. Yay. Well, the ship is of no assistance. Uh, in fact, um, you are getting what look like a lot of false readings from the ship's uh, uh, um, sensors and readouts. It's actually, it feels, it almost seems like, um, if I can tie this complication to the other complication, um, as you're progressing through the delivery, um, the child seems fairly healthy. The readings that you're getting from the ship actually show Cassidy is being fairly healthy uh, and all progressing well. But as the delivery is proceeding, she is getting weaker and weaker. Um, and the ship is not telling you why. It doesn't seem to know why. Um, uh, the delivery, though, is a success. Um, and it is a young, healthy baby boy um, who looks like a cross between Avery Brooks and Sarah Clofton, <laughs> only miniaturized and newborn. <laughs> um, but uh, but Cassidy is definitely fading quickly. What would anyone like to do in that situation? I don't know. It's like she lost the will to live. <laughs> <laughs> Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong story. 
Uh, that's okay, because earlier in my head, Eva was was uh, being played by Manny. Oh, uh, I, Daphne is going when she sees that her uh, she the baby's born, but the mother's uh, dying. She's gonna uh, run to Onia, and she's going, you know, still wearing her like medical scrubs, and she's gonna say, "I I don't know if there's anything more I can do for her. Uh, she's fading, and I'm not sure why." Well, let's see what we can do. So right, meanwhile, cool. Tong is with the baby like, what do I do with this? <laughs> am I supposed <laughs> to just hold this? What am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So you get in. Uh, Daphine, you can assist with this. Mar, uh, not Mar. Um, uh, Tong, the baby, has been handed off to one of their nurses. Um, you can also assist with this if you'd like to. Um, doctor, nurse, and... Uh, ship and engineer can all give me uh, control and medicine. Uh, in the case of the engineer, uh, give me insight and engineering. Okay. Um, Does a fo- focus in internal medicine apply? Yes. Okay. Then I got to. Would m- emergency medicine apply here? Yes. It is emergency internal medicine. That's <laughs> yeah. uh, one success from Tong. Oof. Ship. Only one from ship. me. Plus the ship can assist. And the ship assists. Right. Oh, I was going to roll the ship. Nope. Gotcha. 17. Ship is helpful here. Uh, that does not help because the ship's goal would have been a 14 on this roll. Um, so we got one success. Mm, or, um, uh, I got one. I see. And I assisted. Okay. I assisted for two. So, so we, yeah, so we got three. Four, four. four. Okay. So what you are finding is that she is um she is suffering from um she was not reassembled correctly by the transporter. Okay. Um the uh the transport definitely did some damage. The fact that the ship is not detecting the damage is uh Troubling, but something for cast work on later. <laughs> so, what do you want to do? Um, Was Cassidy? Can we? Can we? Um, sorry, I, I, I hate to cut you off. Sure. Uh, the was Cassidy ever? I don't remember from the show. Was she ever beamed through DS Nine? I would assume so. Then they have a record of her pattern. Yes. We could try to do the same thing we did with the uh, the shuttlecraft and sort of beam beam her from. Uh, th- 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 this will be this will yeah. be Tong. Uh, I I have an idea. Uh, perhaps perhaps uh, I think she she was uh, part of part of the DS Nine whole all of all of that. If they have her pattern, we could beam her from this pad get me to that their pattern. pad, and they could reassemble. They could stop talking and get me the pattern. Eva. <laughs> Eva did sync with the the station early on, so you probably have the pattern in your system, or it can access it quickly. Do what you need to do. Um, I'm not going to make a roll for this to, to find the pattern. It's it you'll find it. Um, however, this will be a difficult transporter maneuver to pull off, and you have no momentum, and I have no threat. Jeffine is going to comment. We do know that this. This happened because she went through the transporter. Do we really think sending her through another transporter <laughs> is going to make things better? It's worth a try. In fact, it's our best option at this point. I respectfully disagree, Doctor. I'm going to register my disagreement on the walk. You are welcome to do so. Um, okay. Um, knowingly, you probably could correct this extremely difficultly by hand uh but you, she may not live long enough for that to happen it could be done by hand but it may not she may not live through it she may also not live through the transporter so um so if you want to try the transporter thing we're gonna the difficulty is gonna be four uh and it's going to be now i'm gonna say it's three because you have ideal conditions otherwise other than she's dying um and I'm going to say it's going to be uh, control and engineering 
Or control in medicine. Control in engineering is fine. Yeah. Or I'm actually going to go with daring in engineering because this is a pretty daring thing to do. Uh, and if one person would like to assist, I will say that uh, it could be daring and medicine. Can we assist though? <laughs> like, what, what would we be doing to assist? You'd be working, like, you'd be trying to make sure the patterns all line up and, and everything is right. The, you know, the medical doctor's like, well, no, that gene sequence doesn't go there. Oh, she's got a beak. She's got a beak now. It's not, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I will. They're matter resequencers, right? <laughs> right. So, all right. So, Tong, it is on you to save Cassidy Yates. So, that's daring? Daring and engineering. Oh, yeah. Tong is not all that daring. <laughs> Okay, uh, I assume his focus in transporters uh, applies. Correct. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't have enough control over this NPC sheet, so I'm just going to manually roll. That's fine. Uh, that is uh, 9 plus 4 is target 13 or less. Um, I could buy threat, or I could buy a dice with threat. You could? Go for it. Yeah, I'm going to buy a dice with threat. Okay. I'm going to immediately use that threat to increase the complication range. Sure. Love it. Uh, okay. Three dice, uh, 13 or less with a focus. That's, I'm assuming that's a ship assist. No, that was me. Okay. Woo! <laughs> All right. Four successes okay. from Tong. Okay. Uh, so that's six successes. Five successes. Five successes. All right. Uh, you resequence. Uh, Cassidy Yates. Uh, she looks younger when she comes out. Hey. <laughs> Not a lot younger, but you it's know. An <laughs> it's an old pattern. It's an old pattern. But yeah, you have managed to, she will take some time in sick bay, obviously, to recover and and who knows what the, com the side effect complications of trans of resequencing a new mother is going to be, but is you know. she still, is she pregnant again? Oh, no. God. No, no. <laughs> Twins? <laughs> uh... I don't want to give an answer to that because I don't know what I want the answer to be. <laughs> uh, if you go by the book, she had a daughter. If you go by uh, um, what we left behind the documentary, she has a son. So maybe. <laughs> um, but we will assume that she is uh, she is otherwise alive and healthy for the moment. You guys will continue doing your your things, and um, uh, the new mother will will have that to go for and we will we will move along she appears to survive for now so when this has all settled down Daphne is still going to talk to Oniet but I know we want to have scenes with Oniet and Cass and uh uh Jasira Jis as well Jajin as well sure Jajin as well sure so whatever whichever scene you guys want to have next go ahead we can also say some of these for next time if you want to because you do have the time the whole transport to I mean, um, we're we're less than three hours in so far. I I think we can get through it tonight. Sure. I normally um, try to. Well, we're yeah. I try to try, normally try to end right around ten, but we can go a little longer. Go ahead. So Dasavi will start with Cass. Um, she will find him in his office. Find her in her, her. office. She she pings the door. Ouch. Enter. Lieutenant. Oh, hi, Doctor. Do you have a moment? Absolutely. What's up? I wanted to talk about the away mission. Okay. I will start by saying I respect your authority as the second officer. And as the acting command of the mission. However, when dealing with medical issues or potential medical problems that could arise, that is my area of expertise. And as the chief medical officer, I would appreciate it if you would respect my authority in that regard from here on out. Doctor, I respected it and overrode it. There were more lives than one at stake. I had to prioritize the good of the mission and of the lives of everyone, including yourself. And leaving a hostage um, 
at the mercy of their captors any a second longer than need be. When we were under fire, it's not an acceptable risk for anyone involved. Except you, you significantly risk killing both her and her child in transporting them. And in fact, had it not been for the quick thinking and and incredibly fast action of our transport engineer, Yates would have died. Yes. And that risk had to be balanced against the lives of our team and her and of the people holding her prisoner as well. We got out of that situation with no casualties. That was not a likely outcome, doctor. And I understand that you regarded Ms. Yates as your patient and put her, her, put her well-being first. That is your job as doctor, as mission commander, that is not mine. Mine is the mission and the team and everyone else involved. One, there are other I cannot less prioritize risky options. Um, you're welcome to think so and you're welcome to take a report to the captain. And I'm not going to needlessly risk anyone's life. I'm not needlessly going to risk anyone's life on an away mission. And yet we did. Not needlessly. Everyone else came back alive. Everyone came back alive. You you could have ordered the Bajorans beamed out and let me attend to Yates. Perhaps. Um, you had reported that there were additional people there who we could not detect. At the time, we thought that there were some sort of camouflage or cloaked people in that room who would have remained there. This way, the one person who was incapable of defending themselves was removed from the equation. This was a command decision, not a medical decision, doctor. In some instances, there's no separating the two. And this was one of those instances. I beg to differ. You are welcome to beg to differ all you like. And as second officer and commander of the way mission, it is and remains my call. Should the captain decide to investigate or to pursue disciplinary action, that is within his power to do so. Otherwise, the matter is closed. As the chief medical officer, it is well within my rights to override in the case of a medical issue. I don't like to have to do that. I'd rather not step on toes, but noted for future. And if I think that you are putting the lives of my team in danger or jeopardizing the success of the mission, there will be complications. I hope there won't be, doctor. I really hope there won't be. I certainly hope so as well. Okay. This, this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we have another thing we wanted to do? Um, uh, go ahead. Daphine is going to want to have a very similar conversation with Dr. Onia. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I, I think we should do now because it's going to have a lot of parallels. Sure. Okay. So, Doc, you arrive back in, I'm going to say, sick bay. Uh, and uh, Daphine is waiting for you in your office. Yeah, Daphine just looks exhausted. She's been in tending to labor for almost 24 hours now. Right. Uh, she's going to say, that was insane. Indeed it was. Are you standing or sitting? Standing. Please have a seat, Lieutenant. <laughs> the... Do, do you not realize the recklessness in that? There's a reason that teleporters are not used in delicate medical procedures. There's also a reason we don't tend to teleport pregnant people, but well, I don't what's disagree done with is you. done. But why, the, why, so because they were just teleported once, we can just teleport her willy-nilly? That's your logic? Not willy-nilly. And... Need I remind you of protocol? Yes. I understand you are upset. However, we are professionals. Yes. I know. It's just... 
I've read your profile. You are an incredibly unconventional doctor. I understand that. But uh, all I ask is that we try the conventional procedures first and only, only try insanity when there remains no other option. Lieutenant, how much experience do you have with emergency situations? I served at, I served at Tycho Hospital for three years on, on call. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. So you're aware that there are situations when you have to make a split second decision because time is not on your side. I, I am aware, but I disagree with you that trying untested methods uh, is the idea it is an acceptable solution even in times of, such as that. Recalling someone's transporter pattern is hardly an untested method method. It's been used before and has been used successfully. Perhaps I missed that che- that that course in medical school using teleporters and surgeries. Not in surgeries, however, there is a precedent that can be translated over into the situation. Our other option was to attempt to essentially recalibrate Yates by hand, which could have taken, which would have taken hours and hours. And she didn't have that time. Well, I think she could have survived. I think she would have. We could have kept her alive. And we, we got lucky. We got extraordinarily lucky. Even you have to admit that. I think it was more skill than luck. I do believe there is, there was some luck at play. However, it was the skill of both Tong and yourself and your guidance in helping him calibrate the transporter and pull up her her pattern and arrange it correctly that led us to having a live woman recovering instead of a dead woman on her way to the morgue. Well, I just wasn't going to stand by and do nothing. And I appreciate that. Well, I've, I've said all I need to say. I'm going, I'm going to go sleep for two shifts. Uh, I, I think, think you, you certainly I, should. I think it's, I hope not every day working under you is like this. I sincerely do. I certainly hope not every day we are in these situations. She, she, she looks skeptical of that uh, and then she departs. As she hits the door, um, Yates will, or uh, I know who I am, Dasavi will say, Lieutenant, Good work today. Uh, I'm happy to have you on my team. Uh, uh, <laughs> non-committal grunting. Okay. All right. Do we have any other scenes we want to do? I don't I think would... so. I think Dasavi does want to talk to Captain, but I don't think I'm ready for her to have the conversation yet. <laughs> Fair enough. Why don't, we, so, why don't we do that between sessions via letters? We can do that. Yeah. Okay. I, I think just to put a cherry on the top of those two very parallel scenes, uh, over in Jesus' court, uh, quarters, practicing in front of her mirror is her doing the exact same speech. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to make the call, and I had to make that call. There was no t- <laughs> the, st- the camera just... <laughs> <laughs> love it um, nice um i would like to end um if no one is opposed to it well we don't have to do that we don't actually have to actually have to do the scene but i would like to end with um at least the shot of uh of ambrose finally making it to the bridge um since it's been a long day 
and it's been a lot of going on and Ambrose and the captain are finally going to not only meet in, they've met in person already but now it's uh, the official business on the ship and we don't have to role play that out if we don't want to today but um, I, I think I, I would actually yeah. okay we can, we can make it a short scene I yeah know. I mean I take as much time as you need doesn't matter all right uh, so the captains uh, you know what I, I I'm gonna say you return I'm the captain returns to the ship and he's got a uh, bottle. Uh, he's going to say, uh, Commander Ambrose, I take it the report is on my desk. There are a few. Good, good. Uh, I, I've been keeping up to date and you seem to have everything under control. So I didn't see the, uh, any need to step in. Um, I appreciate the latitude. Well, you know, uh, I hope you can keep it up. Uh, I really wanted to see what uh, what you were made of. Um, so while while you were taking care of uh, all that, I was in Quark's bar of all places. I got you a present, and then he hand, hands you the bottle. What what is it? Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a Cardassian drink called the Kumar. It's an acquired taste, but boy, it'll get you drunk. How how insightful of a person is the captain? Pretty insightful, I think. Okay. Um. I want to. I want to. I want to roll something because I do have composure as oh. as one of my uh, one of my focuses. I don't know what that's going to be, and I don't know if it's going to have any bearing on on anyone, but how I role play this. Uh, <laughs> but 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 uh, let's see what would, what would this be? Probably presence presence command composure. If you're trying to maintain your composure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That seems right. Or control. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Oh. So this eye cries often. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you you see, I I take the bottle and I kind of I kind of look at it and let out a let out a quick breath. I appreciate the gesture, Captain. We will have to toast to a new voyage. You don't seem particularly happy to be starting that voyage, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I am quite eager to start the voyage, sir. All right, then. Uh, Tell you what, why don't we meet? Tom uh, why don't we meet tomorrow? Uh, we'll go over the mission profile together and uh, get uh, get make sure we're on the same page on things. I think that's important. It is, sir. Good. Well, uh, I've uh, I well, if you don't mind, I've got to uh, I pri well, if you don't mind, I'm going to. Go check and make sure that uh, every everything's going smoothly. That was terrible. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna, I've got some work to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, are what? What does that mean? Are you going to your ready room? Are you? No, the bridge. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I figured we were we were both on the bridge. Oh, yeah, well, in that case. Uh, okay. Yeah, in case he will go to the ready room. Yeah. Either way, he's getting out of the seat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so I have the bridge. Yep, you have the bridge. That's a good place okay. to end. I like that. Uh, yeah, I will. I will. We'll will end with uh, uh, Ambrose. Will will take center chair. Still looking at this bottle. Just kind of look up at the view screen and lean over and just put it on his chair, and just <laughs> fold his arms and. Go nice. about.